31 million people live within the path of totality of today's solar eclipse, but millions more, in fact, have traveled there to be part of what many call truly awe-inspiring, unforgettable experience. Absolutely, and over the next three hours, we hope to bring you some of those emotions at home. Well, let's take a look here at the partial eclipse happening right now. This is in Mazatlan. It's pretty dark, can't see too much, but they'll hit totality in a little in a totality in a little over an hour. A little bit later, we'll be in Texas where we have access to high-powered telescopes giving amazing views of the sun. Totality there is about 90 minutes away. We have some time here, Veronica. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Uh, so just uh, find something great to snack on for the next couple of hours here. Here's a quick look now at the path of totality. It starts at Eagle Pass, Texas. That's just before 1.30 Central Time. The moon shadow then goes through Texas, passing through portions of Arkansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Illinois there, as well as Ohio and Indiana, Pennsylvania, and New York before finally hitting Vermont, New Hampshire, and of course, Maine. It then continues into eastern Canada. From start to finish, totality will last about an hour and eight minutes and cover at least a small part of 15 states. That is awesome. It's a pretty good little stretch there. All right, here's a look at when totality starts in some key places. It starts at 127 Central Time in Eagle Pass, Texas on the Mexican border. Little Rock will see totality at about 151. Indianapolis at 306 Eastern Time. That's why that jump in time. Rochester, New York at 320. And finally, totality starts in Holton, Maine at the Canadian border at 332. And that's kind of that last spot in the U.S. that we're going to see it before it moves it off the coast. Zips out. Yeah, just so quick it's gone. Uh, to say that we've got the eclipse covered would be an understatement. <laughs> so every dot on this map represents one of our 50 cameras covering this historic event. But of course, those cameras won't be able to see the sun and the moon if it was not for the weather cooperating. We need a great forecast. Uh, so the weather is a big factor. My colleague meteorologist Steve Rudin is here now to show us the best and the worst viewing locations. And a lot of eyes on the sky and on the sun and the moon as you move through the next couple of hours or so. Let's check out the weather along the path of totality. And as we head over toward Waco and over toward Dallas, we are going to see increasing clouds. This is ahead of a severe weather maker that's going to arrive later in the day. But severe weather is going to be out of the picture during the eclipse as we continue our track over toward Little Rock and Clinton. Uh, looking at dry conditions, plenty of sunshine. Temperatures will be in the middle. 80s progressing farther off toward the north and east. We're looking at Evansville, Indiana, looking at just a few passing clouds. Indianapolis filtered sunshine and temperatures that are going to be in the middle 70s. Our track takes us over toward Cleveland, and that's a great place to watch. We're looking at just a few clouds here and there. They had rain early this morning. That's lifting off toward the west or the east, I should say, and then over toward uh, Watertown and then over into Vermont and Burlington. Great weather to check out the eclipse. All right, well, we are thrilled to have a NASA expert join us here in studio this morning to help better understand what's going on. Dr. Graham Kerr is a solar physicist at the uh, uh, Catholic University as well as at NASA. Uh, he works also at Goddard uh, Flight Space Center in Maryland and is an expert on solar flares, among other things. Welcome, Dr. Kerr. Yeah, thanks. thanks so much for being on the side with us today. We really need an expert from NASA to break it down for us. We're scientists, but we're not experts when it comes to the sun, and this is your uh, expertise. Can you start by telling us the difference? You're a solar physicist. How mm -hmm. is that different from a heliophysicist? So I would say that heliophysics is like the umbrella. Uh, and within that, you've got solar physicists, you've got people who study the solar wind, people who study space weather, people who study how these uh, phenomena interact with the Earth and the solar system and stuff. So heliophysics is the broader picture, okay. and I, uh, I'm a solar physicist within that. Okay, perfect. You've got the glasses right there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm curious, because I pulled these out the other day and I looked at the sun, and you can look at these any time of the year, right? It doesn't have to be during the eclipse. That's and right. look at the sun. Can you see things like solar flares with just these glasses? So with these glasses, what you'll do is block out tons of the sun's light. that will let you see the solar disk, so the sun's surface. Um, and that'll have features on it. So you'll see things like sunspots. Uh, if you're really lucky, you might see some prominences, which are big loops on the side of the sun. Yeah. Seeing a flare will be really hard, just right. with these glasses. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's because the sun is really bright. 
And so to produce enough energy to beat the rest of the sun during a flare is really hard. If you look at other wavelengths, other colors of light, you, you'll see a flare. But here's the thing. We've got some high-powered telescopes that we're going to tap into over the next couple of hours right so with uh, NASA, so we will be able to, to see some of what's going on with the sun's atmosphere. Yeah, that's right. So, okay, walk th folks through it. There's been all sorts of stuff on social media with how this works, right? So the moon blocks the sun, but it's more than that. It's really unique in that at this time in moment, what we have with the moon being 400 times smaller than the sun, how everything has to come together in such a way to get totality. That's right. So in order to, to have a total solar eclipse or even any eclipse, a lot of things have to line up. So you have to have a new moon, so the, the moon has to be between the sun and the earth. Uh, and you might ask, well, we get a new moon every month right. or so. Why doesn't it happen all the time? Had a lot of those questions on social yeah. media. Yeah. <laughs> and that's because the orbit of the, the sun relative to the, the plane that the earth orbit is in is tilted by about five degrees. So if, if you imagine a, a, two hula hoops right. and then you, you move one of the hula hoops and by five degrees, you'll see they only actually intersect twice. And so that's when you'll get an eclipse. So you'll get an eclipse around about spring or maybe around about the autumn. And a total solar eclipse only happens around 18, every 18 months or so. And that's because... Somewhere in the world. Somewhere in the world, so yeah, somewhere in the world. Um, and that's because the sun, not only do they have to line up, but the, the distance between the sun and uh, the Earth changes just very slightly because it's not a perfectly circular orbit. And so what we're having right now is a really, really... Uh, great eclipse because the sun is actually really quick so the moon is really quite close to the sun mm -hmm. interesting right I, okay so tell me about what folks are going to see when the eclipse happens in totality where they are we hear these terms kind of thrown out there like a diamond ring and bailey's beads what are these different terms and how do we see them that's right so there's a few stages to the eclipse so what we'll have first is first contact so that you'll have uh the moon like we see there so the moon is just starting to take a bite out of the sun and that will slowly uh fill up the sun's disk. And just before totality, what you'll see are co something called Bailey's Beats. And that's because the, the moon has mountains, it has structure. And so as the sunlight, the last bits of the sunlight peeks through those mountains, you'll see uh, little flashes and it won't be a perfect circle, you'll see different flashes. And the final Bailey's Beats you'll see is what we call the diamond rings. So you'll see a really, really bright source with the rest of the, the sun blocked. And then you get totality. And during totality, you'll see this, the sun's outer atmosphere that we call the corona, and which you'll, you normally cannot possibly see with your eyes uh, because it's a million times fainter than the, the sun's disk. Mm -hmm. But during totality, you can see it, and you'll see probably, unlike the last eclipse in 2017 in the States, you'll see this corona is, is very active. You'll see lots of structure. You'll see big kind of streamers coming out of it, lots of little wispy plumes. And it'll be, it'll be really mm -hmm. neat. Awesome. And then you'll have the same in reverse as the sun, as the moon moves away from the sun. It all happens in a matter of minutes. <laughs> Take a look at that. That's, we're starting to see the partial in Mazatlan in Mexico, starting to come into North America now. All right, let's head out to Abilene, Texas. Uh, they will be in, uh, uh, let's take a look there. Oh, there she is. They'll be in about 96 and a half percent totality, but the excitement is growing nonetheless. For let's sure. head out there. Yeah, Karina Hollingsworth is at Hardin Simmons University for a watch party. Karina. The day that so we, many have been looking forward to here in Abilene mm -hmm. is finally here. The solar eclipse is ready to, is going to reach its maximum here in a little over an hour. And I'm here at Hardin Simmons University where they're setting up for their watch party. And let me tell you, this is not just a big event here at Hardin Simmons, but all throughout Abilene. People have been scrambling to get their hands on these certified ISO glasses. And I'm here with Hardin Simmons University physics professor, Dr. Stevens. Can you tell me why this is such an epic event? It's only about once every 400 years that someone in their local area gets to witness a total solar eclipse. And do you possibly know when the next eclipse will happen here? It's roughly, I think, 2044. So we've got 20 years before you get to stay home and watch another one. And um, what can we expect to see at 96% totality? It's going to be pretty dark. It's going to be very close to like dusk or dawn. And the sky is going to look really really eerie and if you look at the shadows of leaves you're going to see interesting patterns from the shape of the sun cast on the ground because of the leaves and um how, how many have you seen uh i witnessed the partial eclipse we had a couple months ago and about seven years ago my kids and i watched one uh, from a friend's house 
And how excited are you about the event today? I think it's pretty neat. It's not too often you get to stay home and, and have this guy put on such a show for you. So it's, it's really excellent. And what can your students learn, learn from this experience? Hopefully they learn a little bit about some physics, about the size of the moon and the size of the sun, and how they're just the right size and just the right distance from us that we get to witness a total solar eclipse. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Stevens. Everyone here is so excited. The Heart and Senses of the University told them they have 150 ISO glasses. Live in Abilene, I'm Karina Hollingsworth, K-Texas News. Karina, thanks so uh, much. Uh, magical, that is for sure. Cosmic indeed. We now want to help you better understand what it will be like to experience totality in person. That's right. Meteorologist Avery Tomasco walks us through the timeline. as the partial eclipse begins, unless you're using those certified eclipse glasses. But things will change shortly thereafter. Due to something called the pinhole camera effect, shadows beneath the trees will be dotted with inverted projections of the shrinking sun. You'll also start to notice the atmosphere cooling down as the Earth is releasing heat with less and less of the sun's energy to replace it. Depending on how much humidity is in the air, temperatures could drop by as much as 10 to 20 degrees. And as temperatures drop, any fair weather cumulus clouds overhead developing from thermal updrafts may begin to shrink or even disappear entirely. As totality nears, it'll become noticeably darker. And due to something known as the Purkinje effect and the way our eyes see and process color, everything around you will begin to appear less vibrant, more muted, gray, and dull. And then, just after 1.36 p.m., totality. For just a few minutes, you'll be able to look directly at the eclipse without glasses. There will be a 360-degree violet crown sunset happening all around you. It'll be dark enough for birds to be fooled into thinking it's time to fly home for the night, and any bees sipping on nectar or frantically trying to return to the hive will stop flying entirely, unable to navigate without the sunshine. You may also hear other insects singing their usual evening songs. And then it ends. Slowly but surely, everything resets itself in reverse as the moon moves away from the sun and by 3 p.m. we return to reality after experiencing what many go an entire lifetime without. Yeah, you've no doubt heard it time and time again. Looking directly at the eclipse can permanently damage your eyes. That's right. If you purchase the eclipse glasses, you need to make sure they are real and not the fake ones that could easily be found online. Liz Bonus has information you need to know. When it comes to your eyes and what you'll see on the day of the eclipse, you get one pair and no spare. So in this case, it really is buyer beware. When it comes to total solar eclipse, uh, even though the sun's going to be mostly blocked, uh, there are still UV rays coming down, and so if you look directly into them, it can damage your retina. Yao Jin is an associate professor of supply chain management at Miami University. He says counterfeit viewers, as they are appropriately called, are not necessarily easy to spot. Well, it's helpful to look at this ISO stamp and information, which means they do offer proper protection. Mr. Jin says even the certifications on some of them can look like the real thing when they are not is the false sense of security that ultimately really matters. When it comes to your eye health, it is not worth it to try to save a buck or two, even if you're only going to use the Eclipse Viewer once. He says if you must buy from an online marketplace, look for evidence of manufacturer authorization. To find out more about that, you can go online. These, we've got our glasses, of course, ready to go. You're looking at some uh, shots here of the sun surface. Dr. Care, this is a very unusual time because the sun is actually pretty active right now, about as active as it can get. That's right. So the sun's got a cycle uh, because of the magnetic field in the sun. So every 11 years, we reach what's called solar maximum. We're approaching that maximum right now. So there's tons of flares, coronal mass ejections, lots of other eruptions happening all the time. Uh, so it's, it's a really exciting time to have an eclipse because of because of that. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's amazing. We're, it looks like we're looking at skin right there. It doesn't look like the sun. Yeah, it's cool. amazing the uh, resolution you can get with these telescopes. All right, up next, we'll check in with our live team. We have uh, live team coverage in Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas. Our countdown to totality continues after this.
Welcome back to our coverage of the eclipse across America. Let's continue our trip along the path of totality by returning now to Texas. Yes, Round Rock is just north of Austin. Totality begins there at 1.36 local time. It's also the home of AAA baseball team that plays at Dell Diamond, and that's where meteorologist Avery Tomasco is right now. What's happening at the stadium uh, there? Oh, it's empty, Avery. How's it going? <laughs> that the weather does improve a little bit, at least the cloud cover. Still exactly. <laughs> Time now to head to the state of Oklahoma, Beaver's Bend Park in Hochatown, located in Wachita National Forest. Totality begins there in about 90 minutes and lasts for more than four minutes. Kate Arata from our station in Oklahoma City is there for us. Good afternoon, Kate. Is the excitement building there around you? Yes, good afternoon. The crowds are coming right now. We just started our partial eclipse just a few minutes ago here. Um, we still have a little bit over an hour, but you can see people are out here enjoying the beautiful weather. It is still a little bit overcast, so we're hoping to see the sun, but we got people camping out here, people swimming, people kayaking, all types of fun stuff is going on um, out here today. So everyone's really excited to see this eclipse. And the tourism department here in Oklahoma says they're expecting upwards of 60,000 people here in McCurtain County. And just to put that into perspective for you, the population of McCurtain County is just around 30,000 people. So they're expecting at least double the amount of people here today, all coming to get a front row seat of this eclipse. We're all just keeping our fingers crossed that the sun kind of peeks through those clouds here soon whenever that totality happens. But we're going to get about four minutes of totality at about 145 central time. So it's coming quick for us. And um, everyone here is really excited to see this. We've talked to people from all over the world, the country, um, people from Belgium, Finland, Idaho, Colorado, all over came here to Oklahoma to, to get a front row view of this eclipse. Front row view. How, how's the sky look out there? Is it complete cloud cover? Are you getting any breaks? Um, well, we haven't seen too many breaks, but you know, it came in really fast this morning. We started out here at about seven this morning and it was beautiful, clear skies. And then within, you know, 10 minutes, these clouds came in. So I'm hopeful that they can leave just as fast as they came in earlier this morning. <laughs> Fingers crossed for you, for sure. Thank you, Kate. Exactly, yeah. All right, NASA solar uh, physicist Dr. Graham Kerr rejoins us here again in studio. One of the things that I wanted to talk about, Dr. Kerr, is so folks, they plan their vacations around this. They put a whole bunch of gear in the, and travel for hours to get to an event that is only going to last for a few minutes. But this is an event, for, uh, if you look at 2017, at least we get two minutes longer. Why is it that each total solar eclipse lasts a different period of time? That's a great question. And so 
we're gaining that extra couple of minutes this time because the moon is actually closer to the Earth in its orbit than it was in 2017. Uh, the, the moon's orbit around the Earth is not a perfect circle. It's actually what's called an ellipse, which is like, a, like an egg shape. So it, sometimes it's at its furthest point from the Earth, which is called its apogee. Sometimes it's at its closest point to the Earth, which is its perigee. As so of right now, it's, uh, it's a lot closer, which means it covers more of the sun, and that, that, sh that shadow is bigger, mm -hmm. and so we get a longer eclipse. What is the shortest and longest um, eclipses that you've been to, or, or that that is on record. So on record, I'm not sure. That I've been to. I've only seen totality at the 2017 eclipse. Uh -huh. So that was a couple of minutes. I was in Madras, Oregon. Um, uh, but it also varies where you are on the on the path as well. Right. So it, like where we were in the path was actually not as long as, as somewhere else. So center so. of the path is where you want to be for the longest the totality. Because we've seen somewhere the totality is like 19 seconds long. That's right. If you're right on the right. edge, it can be 10, 20 <laughs> seconds. But even moving a couple of miles into the path can increase it quite, quite rapidly. It falls off really sharply. That's so even, right. even if you can get a couple of miles further into the center line, I, I would recommend trying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people who were saying they were in like 99% totality, I was like, just make that extra push, just get into totality, it's totally worth it, because it's a huge difference, right? What you experience out there in 99 versus 100. Yeah, yeah. yeah I completely agree. That is so true, and, and so many people, okay, so, you know, it's been a while since we had one, 2017, the last mm -hmm. one for the US. Uh, I think some folks who maybe didn't focus as much on the big difference between 90% versus 100%, of the moon obscuring the sun, there is a huge difference. I, I mean, it's almost like going from uh, here in Washington, D.C., where you go, ooh, that's cool, partial, right? right? But then you go, wow, or sometimes you're just left speechless when you're in totality uh, to make that extra effort to get in the car and drive a couple hours. All right, yeah. I think we have another reporter we can send it out to here, uh, another live shot. We want to get uh, check uh, back in Oklahoma. Well, let's turn to Broken Bow. It's not very far, far from uh, Hoka Town, where Broken Bow Lake is in Beavers Bend State Park. And that's where we find meteorologist Joy Bettenhausen right now. Good afternoon, Joy. What's going on there? Good afternoon, guys. We are in downtown Idabel right now. We've been battling the clouds all morning long. Thankfully, we've been able to get some breaks in those lower level clouds, but we're still seeing those thin higher level clouds. I think we're going to still deal with those throughout the duration of this event. We should hit totality right around 150, 153, and we are definitely excited for that. Now, I have this awesome family that I met. We're talking to Pete, Steve, and Archer, and they're coming in from New Mexico. So what does it mean to you? I mean, you have been interested in me in meteorology, so this is a big deal, right? Right, right. It, like everybody says, sort of a once in a semi lifetime. It's it's great. It's a great opportunity. That's awesome. We're so happy you're with us now, Steve. We've got all three generations here. What does it mean as a family man to have you here? I'm just the driver, so <laughs> um, no. It's just these two have been waiting for this and planning for it for months, and so it's just really great to get to spend the time together and have a have a little family adventure. I love that. Now, Archer, you being kind of the younger one in this whole pack of family waiting for the eclipse, what drove your passion to come out and check this out? Well, I didn't get to see the one in 2017. He did. Um, and I'm interested in meteorology and astronomy myself. And yeah, really just saw the opportunity. I'm on spring break right now. So we just came out and did it. Well, definitely a perfect time. Me and you will chat about meteorology after. That is awesome. Thank you guys so much, and I hope you guys have a great time. We are so excited to be out here. Downtown is packed. The streets are lined with cars. We've got a food truck. We've got music. There's millions of telescopes out there in the park over at Carl Sherman Plaza. Everyone's so excited to see the eclipse. Again, the big question is the cloud cover. It's something we'll be watching. Right now, we saw a hole in the cloud cover over northern Texas. We're about a few hours from that. So we're keeping our fingers crossed that that clear sky will eventually travel north. And that's going to give us a view of peak totality happening right around 153. So we're so excited from that. We're live right now in Idabel, Oklahoma. Meteorologist Joy Bettenhausen here. We'll send it back to you guys. Awesome. Thank you, Joy. You know, it's a good reminder that we can plan this out years and years in advance and know exactly when and where totality is. But we can't control the weather. Right, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and some people, like you said, have even moved from what their original location was. Yeah. 
was. I mean, one uh, of our meteorologists, if, if, Ed Piotrowski, he was in Texas <laughs> two days ago, flew to Maine, or he flew to Boston, drove up to Maine. He right, wanted to clear exactly. skies, he didn't want to miss it. Right. And we're back in studio with NASA solar physicist uh, Dr. Kerr. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about is some of the research that we're going to be looking at. So, uh, very unique research that only can be done sometimes during a, a total solar eclipse, mm -hmm. studying the surface of the sun. Is it really 200 times hotter than the sun itself, the atmosphere? That's right. So the, it's, it sounds kind of unusual because you might imagine you're out camping and you're at a, at a campfire and you walk further away from it, it gets colder. But the sun is actually different. It gets warmer the further you get from the surface. So the sun's surface is around about uh, 10,000 degrees. Uh, whereas this is, our atmosphere is a million degrees and we don't actually know why. So it's a really active area of, of research. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things we're going to be talking about throughout the show here too is how it impacts our technology on Earth. Some of that that's coming out we're of the atmosphere. We're going to pick your brain a little bit more. <laughs> exactly. And we're back right after this. From the National Weather Desk, this is live coverage of the eclipse across America. And welcome back. NASA has played a huge role in preparing all of us for this historic event. They have a team in Bandera, Texas that has special high-tech equipment to get powerful views of the eclipse. More than four minutes of totality in Bandera begins in about one hour. The city is about an hour northwest of San Antonio, if you've never heard of it. And that's where we have our meteorologist, Brad Souter. He's from our San Antonio station. Hi, Brad. Good to see you out there. How's the weather looking? You too. Well, right now we have some cloud cover, but we just saw first touch a minute ago. Clouds opened up just uh, for a second. Jack Lee, uh, this is a, a Rice student here, physicist, mathematician, and you've been helping with all these high-powered telescopes. Uh, you've got this filter on here right now, and mm -hmm. we just saw first touch. How excited are you? Oh yeah, it's thrilling. You know, uh, you don't see that every day. The moon eats a little chunk out of the sun. So that's all really cool. We're hoping that the clouds clear up a little bit. Yeah. Our hope is that as the eclipse happens, the temperatures will lower a little bit, and that will allow some of the clouds to condense up. So that's what we got our fingers crossed will happen here. Yeah, exactly, Jack, and we're going to show the audience here, if you want to pan over, uh, hundreds of people, students, professors, researchers from Rice University in Houston, Texas, NASA affiliated. These are the, the smart of the smart when it comes to space. And inside we have a control center where we can see our own, our own, well, 
uh, views with all of the telescopes. Jack, let's go check it out, sure. see if we can see what first touch looks like. And we have mapping from all over the nation that we're feeding into this. In fact, Veronica might know uh, Dave Jones here from WJ. Uh, yeah, you do. Storm yeah, Storm Center. You, you know Dave oh. Jones here. And, hey, uh, Dave. Uh, Dave. You've got yeah. Matsalan pulled up. Yeah, yeah. This is, uh, this <laughs> she says, hey, Dave. Yeah. Dave has all the high-tech, high-powered equipment. And uh, so uh, they have a little bit clearer skies than here in Bandera, but it's peeking through, right? We saw it here in Bandera. Uh, uh, we're also fighting some more moisture coming in at the yeah. low levels, so it's a, it's a tug and pull. So this is here. in Mexico right now. That's right. And from time to time, we are getting views of this here. Uh, in, in Bandera, Texas. Yeah, and the shadow uh, of the moon is moving about 15, 1600 miles per hour. So it's going to increase in its speed as it goes up across the country. So it's going to be pretty amazing. Yeah, a uh, very exciting time uh, here. Uh, and this is, you've seen a bunch of these. You've been all over the country for these, right? Well, I, uh, last time with 2017 in uh, Salem, Oregon, it was uh, tremendous. It was really clear, not a cloud in the sky. <laughs> but, you know, meteorologists, we don't control the weather, right? Uh, we, I know. We, we forecast. <laughs> we, we, we try to control it, but, uh, um, yeah, we, we charge Can extra for that. Texas, Say it again. Yeah. Bandera is up. That's Bandera oh. is up right that's now. Our, we got a little, so, that's our recorded image of Okay, yeah. is that on that monitor over there yeah. as well? Yeah, yeah that's okay. It's, it's so, okay, there it is right there, you guys. That's our live shot here. See, what we're getting is just those moments of clearing. Oh, no, so, it's not on that. Okay, no, that's Mazelan. So, yeah. uh, we, we do have the Bandera shot as well. Um, obviously, lots of technology yeah. all over the place. This Overall, is kind of the command center. Um, but yeah, you can see these guys are hard at work here, pulling up the shot. So it looks like it just went back oh, into, back. right over here. here see if you can pull it up on this oh, shot right over here. So there is our view at the very moment. Yeah, so. that's the view from the telescope we just saw just then. There it is. Yeah. That's nice. And, and that was about it, right? Yeah. <laughs> that was gone. Peekaboo. Okay, oh, that's it's, right. back. <laughs> it's back. It's back. It's back. So. So this is a good sign because this will show once it cools down, these low clouds that are problematic right now, hopefully will dissipate. Well, some clouds, they have been known to dissipate. I mean, when we have, when we have totality, the temperature goes down. So the heating of the land goes down. Uh, the only thing I'm worried about is if we have a lot of low level moisture, right? Mm -hmm. The clouds are kind of blocking the sun anyway. And if the temperature goes down, it could meet the dew point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the fog. Cloudy. We were talking about that. Yeah. Uh, back in the studio, do you guys have any questions for these researchers, these experts that you'd like to figure yes. out what's going on here? Oh, so yeah, I, I would like to know. So if, if we're seeing a drop in temperature, okay. could we also along the path of totality see the wind increase just a bit? Or okay, so the question down. is, if, if when the temperature drops because it gets darker, may, the wind would the wind kind of increase as well, and does it that could. have an effect on the cloud it cover? It could, it could, because you could have um, you could have gradients. You know, you have those temperature gradients, and temperature plays a role in creating wind, right? It's a mm -hmm. there's an equation there that put, brings it all together. Remember that <laughs> math? That's this guy, <laughs> this guy here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so there is a chance that we could see a change in the wind direction. I'm here in Bandera uh, looking more for a slight temperature yeah. change. So when we hit total totality, I'm hoping we can see the shadow uh -huh. coming across the foothills, you know, the hill country, and uh, see what happens. But uh, fingers across. There's a lot of people out here. I was out at lunch yesterday and just asking the town of 900 people, right? Yeah. Just asking folks, where are you from? Where are you from? First one was California. Then I got Tucson and then I got Germany, the next folks. <laughs> so this is a worldwide event that people came here for this. Yeah, it is. And you know, the next one in two years is going to be across Italy and the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. So uh, 20 years, Montana, right? That's Mont the next chance in the United States. Montana, And then the 2045 is going to come across, uh, I think, California and then down across Florida. Florida. So Disney World, make some reservations. 2045 is okay. going to be a to to total eclipse. Uh, if they, uh, if they see if we accept the reservations, it clicks out that far. But hey, the last time that a total solar eclipse happened here, 1397. And there's only one place in the world. That last fall, we had the annular eclipse, the Ring of Fire. Ring of fire. Um, <laughs> this is the only place in the world 
where X marks the spot. We've had both right here, the only place in the world. So how lucky are That's we? That's right, exactly. So we're, our fingers and toes are crossed that this low-level moisture goes away yeah. and yes. we can start to see more of the sun. Absolutely, Well, well thank you so much. We are going to, of course, be uh, returning to you of course. Uh, a little later in Dave the Jones. show. A I know, Dave in Jones. The Washington, D.C. Exactly. Area, former broadcast meteorologist. <laughs> right. Uh, but again, we, we talk about this, uh, that folks turn into eclipse uh, chasers, yeah. right? Because it's life changing. It's life changing. Okay. So many people there. It's like a rock concert yeah. uh, that you witness for two and a half, four minutes or so, and it just changes you where you're, where you're like, when's the next one? I, I have to be there. Yeah, because we can predict them, which is great, yeah. which, you know, weather is a little more difficult. You know what you can't predict? Earthquakes. Yeah. But there was one on Friday. Then there were some rumors out there spreading around on social media that the earthquake in New Jersey was somehow connected to today's eclipse. Right, and we can tell you without a doubt, uh, it's not true. <laughs> the USGS National Earthquake Information Center said there is no correlation between earthquakes of that size and celestial bodies or events like the total solar eclipse right. that we're seeing today. Yeah. Now there's plenty of other eclipse myths out there and we're about to bust some of them for you. Uh, let's take a look with meteorologist Matt Ritter. Who's gonna separate fact from fiction when it comes to some of these? The first myth, the total solar eclipse produces harmful rays that can cause blindness. Fact, the brilliant corona only emits electromagnetic radiation. There is nothing that can cause blindness. The real danger is looking at the exposed sun without proper protection. That could damage your retinas. Myth, you can safely watch an eclipse through sunglasses. Fact, as we've reported several times, you must have certified eclipse glasses for optimal safety. Sunglasses do not provide adequate protection. Myth, dogs go blind during an eclipse. Fact, on a normal day, your dog doesn't try to look at the sun and damage their eyes, so don't expect them to do it during an eclipse. There's no reason for them to wear eclipse glasses. Myth, there are no total solar eclipses at the North or South Pole. Fact, there is nothing unique about these locations and solar eclipses happen there just like everywhere else on Earth. Myth, eclipses can harm a pregnant woman's baby. Fact, there is no additional solar radiation during an eclipse that could harm you or a developing fetus. Myth, eclipses will poison food prepared during the event. Fact, again, the solar radiation levels do not change during an eclipse. Any food poisoning would be purely coincidental. For the National Weather Desk, I'm meteorologist Matt Ritter. And I know you're probably <laughs> chuckling at some of them, but don't laugh because these are all things that people have asked and wondered about on social media. That was really true. Gotta clarify. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> clarify. Well, given the weather, some of the best viewing could be in Southern Illinois. Mm -hmm. In fact, this is one of the spots where they got the eclipse in 2017. Carbondale begins just before 2 p.m. local time and lasts for four minutes and 10 seconds. And yes, the city is holding an eclipse festival, of course. Julia Rosier joins us live. Good afternoon, Julia. Tell Tell us how things are looking out there. The sun is shining on your face. That's a good sign. Yeah, Veronica, Emily, that's right. The sun is shining. It is a beautiful day here in Carbondale, Illinois. The energy and the excitement for the solar eclipse can really just be felt throughout the entire community. We're here at Saluki Stadium at Southern Illinois University. Over 11,000 people here in the stadium to view that eclipse. In just a few minutes, we'll be able to have and see that partial totality leading up to totality at 1.59 p.m. Central Time. But in the meantime, there's music and entertainment performances by local community groups and even SIU is hosting an art mural challenge. I'm joined by Antonio Martinez who is the artist of the mural behind us. Antonio, how? tell me about this challenge. Well, the challenge is uh, for Maddie, uh, Dieter and I to uh, finish this mural by the end of the eclipse. So I had to take a head start because my design is pretty intricate and also I have a 10 month year old, uh, not year, month. That makes a big difference. Um, so I didn't have a lot of time to uh, practice. So this is kind of the, the first first run. Um, so I luckily I have some, uh, one of my students is here. I teach a art design uh, mural class and he's a, he's actually a student athlete on the swimming team and he actually uh, recruited two of uh, his uh, swim mates 
and I have one of my assistants as well. Well, the mural is looking great so far co cons compared to, you know, how much progress you've made when we first got here. You know, tell me about what you're painting. Um, yeah, so the design is actually inspired uh, from my 2017 experience. I was at Campus Lake and uh, during the eclipse, the spring peeper frogs were just, they were just so loud. So I was inspired by the spring peeper frog, very nocturnal, uh, the active uh, animal. So there's a spring peeper frog, we'll eventually get to it. There's two landmarks, uh, the Bald Knob Cross and the, uh, the Paul Simon Water Tower in Makanda. So those features will be in here. And just, just trying to uh, create, uh, I guess, my, my impression of the, the solar eclipse, how the sunset, is, you'll see sunset colors during the uh, totality. So a lot of this is just being inspired from the 2017 experience and hopefully people will who have witnessed it close before will will get and understand it. And how much progress is left to go? Oh my gosh, uh, we're probably maybe at 80 percent, maybe 85 percent. Like, yeah, it's it's gonna we'll be cutting close. Well, thank you so much. Reporting live in Carbondale, I'm Julia Rosier. Back to you. All right. Well, there are just two national parks within the path of totality. One is Cuyahoga National Park, located in Ohio. The other is Hot Springs National Park in Arkansas. Totality in Hot Springs begins at 1.49 local time and lasts for three and a half minutes. Kayla Christian is there right now. Good afternoon, Kayla. How are things looking out there in Hot Springs? Good afternoon here in Hot Springs. It is absolutely beautiful. The sun is shining. We have so many people out here. There are actually hundreds of people out here on the infield. They opened it up just so that people could come participate. I mean, people have been lining up for hours just to make sure that they can get a good spot to see that totality. And again, we're going to be one of the places that's getting over three minutes. So it's definitely an exciting, life-changing moment for so many right here. There's live music it going on we actually just heard about a dance competition that's going on in a car giveaway so they're making sure that this is a win all around but we actually have been speaking from people from near and far and I actually have one person here with me I have Amy Bowen and she's gonna talk a little bit about what it's like growing up in hot springs and now seeing all these people here it's just an amazing place to be especially a place to be on history um, it's so amazing especially growing up here Oaklawn is one of my favorite places to be and I couldn't imagine spending it anywhere else today. So could you ever imagine that this would be something that you would see? No, never in my lifetime. It's so neat to actually get to experience it here with you in the infield at Oaklawn. So who all is here with you today? Actually, I have some of my children with me today. My husband's playing back with me and some friends. So we're having a great time out here. Traffic was actually great for us as well. So what are you most excited for when it comes to this totality? Just to be a part of history right here in my hometown and just to be right here in a great place on a beautiful day and to get to experience the eclipse. Awesome. So it's a win for you all around and hopefully you win this bag. <laughs> Kayla, thank well, you so much. It's pretty fun stuff happening out really there in Hot is. Springs. All right. We'll be right back after a short break. We're going to get more expert opinion and more live shots from across that path of totality.
And welcome back to Eclipse Across America. Well, millions of bats called Texas home, including those that live under Austin's Congress Avenue Bridge. So how will they react when the skies suddenly turn dark? Have you seen this happen in Austin? I have. It's wild. <laughs> All right, as Betty Cross shows, the scientists are eager to find out as well. Every night, this is the jaw-dropping sight at Bracken Cave on the outskirts of San Antonio. Fran Hutchins is the director of Bracken Cave Preserve. The population at its peak is around 20 million bats. That's about 18 million more bats than fly out from Austin's Congress Avenue Bridge to grab dinner. So Congress Avenue Bridge is the largest urban colony bass. These giant roosts make Central Texas the ideal spot to monitor the reaction of bats and the animals that prey on them during April's total solar eclipse. At Bracken Cave, Hutchins and other experts will be walking the perimeter, monitoring any change in behavior. But since the bats are underground, they're less likely to notice the moon completely blocking the face of the sun. Where scientists think there could be a bigger reaction is downtown Austin. The bats roosting here underneath the bridge are more likely to notice day is temporarily becoming night. Experts aren't sure what the nocturnal bats will do, but the possibilities range from not noticing to becoming confused, anxious, or even flying out to see what the fuss is all about. NASA is also curious, and not just about bats. The Eclipse Soundscapes Project will monitor atypical animal behaviors in Central Texas and along the entire eclipse path. They're recording insect, animal, birds, and the bat sounds before, during, and after the eclipse to see if there's any changes in behavior. Experts say don't be surprised if humans have a more impressive reaction than bats that could possibly snooze through it. We'll see. That's a lot of bats. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right, we talked about this earlier. Most of Michigan will not experience totality except for a tiny little corner along Lake Michigan. Right, but that probably doesn't stop the crowds. Erie Township in southeast Michigan will have just 19 seconds of totality starting at 313 this afternoon. That's where we find Mike Wolfolk from our station there in Flint, Michigan. He joins us now live from the Erie Marsh Preserve. Mike, you've probably seen it all during your career, but tell me, have you ever witnessed it? total solar eclipse not total i have uh participated in 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 making the pinhole projectors uh for some partial eclipses in the past but i have never ever experienced totality so i'm kind of looking forward to this uh kind of the plum assignment if you will we are at the uh, erie marsh nature preserve we're probably about three four miles north of the Michigan Ohio state line. And I have with me um, Helen, who is the director of the Nature Conservancy here. They own and, and run this, this property. I know you didn't advertise this as being open to the public, but it is because you didn't want to get inundated. The infrastructure is not set up for that, but you have uh, quite a turnout here. We do. We have lots of people from the local community, our staff and families. And you know what's great about this is nature just makes everybody forget everything. You can come together. All this craziness in the world, partisan, it all comes together and everybody's here to see some a phenomena that they're never going to see for many, many years, if ever. Yeah. Have you ever experienced a, a total eclipse? No, not a total. Well, I'm told when I was two years old, this will tell you how old I was, in 1963, I was at one, but I don't remember it. Well, so. that means you're only, you only have one year on me, <laughs> if that, depending on what month you were born in. As I, as I mentioned to the anchors uh, in D.C., I, I've experienced partial eclipses and it, that's cool in and of itself but to see a total eclipse even if it's just for you know 30 seconds or so it's still going to be really cool i'm told it is totally night and day difference and that 50 percent of the people are going to cry and that'll probably be me because <laughs> i think it'll be very spiritual and yeah. it's just so wonderful to be able to host people here and everybody has moon pies and Milky Way candy bars and sun chips. So all the food groups represented as treat bags. Yeah, so. it's all going to be cool. Helen, thanks for uh, Thank letting you. us come in and, and invade the territory here. Again, they're expecting uh, totality here sometime after 3 o'clock, right, right around the 3.15 time span. But I'm told that the eclipse will actually start here to be visible, uh, say, in the next 10, 15 minutes. Guys, back to you.
but yeah. partial happening very <laughs> soon. All right, now Ohio is a big state for viewing the eclipse this time around. And one of our first teams that we're gonna visit is our station uh, in Cincinnati. Columbus and Dayton have blanketed the state for extensive coverage. Our first stop out there in Marion, right, Veronica? That's right, where the totality begins there at 311 local time. It lasts for about three and a half minutes, and that's where we find Kate Seifert at Ohio State University's Marion campus. And Kate, I see some folks behind you there. You're ready to go, of course. Uh, what has the vibe been like this morning? A lot of energy? Yeah, there is a lot of energy here, you guys. So we got here right around 7 o'clock, and that's when the parking lot opened at this OSU branch campus in Marion, which is just about an hour north of downtown Columbus. This is one of many areas around this whole campus where families are gathering. So you can take a look. I'll give you a peek at all these families who have set up basically kind of like a tailgate situation. So families started coming in around 7 o'clock, and there's a lot of people from Ohio, but we also met families from North Carolina, from Maryland, from New York, from Washington, DC. We actually saw a charter bus come in from Washington, D.C., filled with an entire family of about 40 people who came just for this event today. And there's a lot of cool things for families and for kids to do while they are here. And this is one of them. It's just an opportunity for people to look through these telescopes and get a peek at what this eclipse is going to look like in a safe, a safe viewing matter. And Barbara Ryden is here. She's a professor from the OSU main campus down in Columbus. Barbara, tell me a little bit about this opportunity that people people are getting here today. Well, they're getting perhaps the opportunity of a lifetime since at any given spot, like right here, a total solar eclipse is quite a rare phenomenon. This means that we have people here who have come from quite far away. So far, the most distant trip I've heard from is somebody who came here from Florida. Wow, wow. So yeah, it's not often someone from Florida comes to Ohio, but for a total solar eclipse, it's worth it. For sure, yeah, I met someone from California earlier, people from all across the country. This is your third eclipse, right? And a lot of people have been saying, once you see one, you can't go back. Can you tell me about the sensation that this is? Oh, it was wonderful. My first eclipse was actually in the Caribbean on a cruise. And you know, first of all, it's an amazing experience visually. But then you know, a couple of minutes after totality, a couple of whales surfaced nearby saying, what the? Leap was that. Yeah. At least I'm assuming that's what they were saying. I don't yeah. speak whale, but <laughs> yeah, if you're anywhere near uh, any kind of animal, they get very confused. Whoa, it's dark. Wait yeah. a minute. Wasn't expecting that. Exactly. And that's something that we expect to see here in Ohio today. I'll give you one last peek at some of this experience that people are getting here in Marion. Once again, about an hour north of Columbus. We are about an hour or so away from when we are going to experience totality here. So we are very, very excited, you guys. I'll send it back to you in your studio. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, the anticipation of it all, right? And what we said, folks traveling so far for, in some instances, what's less than a minute. To Ohio. Exactly. <laughs> it's a good day for Ohio. All right, we want to bring back in our expert, solar physicist, Dr. Graham Kerr uh, from NASA, explaining everything, breaking it down for us. We've been showing this picture on the screen. Let's talk about what's happening here, uh, because this is from Mazatlan, Mexico, correct? It looks like, yes. So this is kind of the first spot in North America where this is moving through. And we're, mm -hmm. What are we looking at right now? So what you're seeing is the moon starting to, uh, well actually it's quite a long way now, across the sun's disk. So it's blocking out a large fraction of the sun's light. In fact, uh, so this is a partial eclipse. And this is what we'll, what most of the country will see. And so I know we've been talking a lot about how, how amazing the total yes. is, but I do think the partial is definitely worth seeing. And so especially if you're here in DC and you have some way to, to view the eclipse safely with, with mm -hmm. the viewing glasses. This is what this is comparable to what we'll see. We'll see uh, this mm -hmm. kind of crescent-shaped sun uh, with, with the moon taking a chunk out, out mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. And you have to have your safety glasses on you do. to view any you, partial, correct? If you want to look at the sun yep. to see this, you must have some form of, of safety viewing glasses. If you don't have those, you can do other things like a pinhole or a colander. Mm -hmm. Or, or things like this. Okay, cool. thank we'll talk you. Talk about all of those different things. In a minute. Exactly, you're right. We've got a lot more questions that we're going to be answering for you too coming up within the uh, next couple of hours. Here, we want to head back now to Southern Illinois because it could have some of the best viewing in the Midwest. That's right. As a reminder, totality begins there just before 2 p.m. Central Time. Nashville meteorologist Katie Morgan appears frequently, of course, on the National Weather Desk. We see her a lot, and we want to go out to Katie, who is uh, looks like a long way from Music City. Are you? 
out there, Katie? Can you hear us? in Marion will be at 159 and should last just about four minutes. That's perfect. And of course, we're going to be uh, checking back in also with Marion uh, coming up uh, within the next couple of hours. But one of the things that you're going to notice with this event is that it's all about the people in bonding, getting them together to experience this very special and unique event. Our live coverage of Eclipse Across America continues after this. From the National Weather Desk, this is live coverage of the eclipse across America. Good afternoon and welcome to the National Weather Desk coverage of the eclipse across America. I'm meteorologist Veronica Johnson. And I'm meteorologist Emily Gracie. For those of you just joining us here in the Washington, D.C. area and elsewhere across the country, the next two hours should be very exciting. Happy Eclipse Day, Happy Emily. Happy Eclipse Day. <laughs> of course. We're just a few minutes away from totality arriving in North America. It happens in just about seven minutes in Mazatlan, Mexico, and you will see it live right here. Right. Now here's a quick look at the path of totality in the United States. It starts in Texas in less than 30 minutes. The moon's shadow then heads north, passing through portions of Arkansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and New York before finally hitting Vermont, New Hampshire, and lastly, Maine for the U.S. It then continues into eastern Canada. Now from start to finish, totality will last about an hour and eight minutes and cover at least a portion of 14 states. That's a fast moving shadow. Here's a look at when totality starts in some key places. As we said, Eagle Pass, Texas will see darkness at 127 Central Time. Little Rock will see totality at 151. Indianapolis at 306 Eastern Time. Rochester, New York at 320. And finally, totality starts in Holton, Maine, right there on the Canadian border at 332.
Okay, so take a look at this map here because every dot on this map represents one of our 50 cameras covering this historic event. But of course, those cameras won't be <laughs> able to see the sun and the moon if the weather doesn't cooperate. And weather certainly is a big factor here today. Meteorologist Steve Rudin, now he's standing by to show us what the weather is looking like across the country. Hey, Steve. Hey, location is key, and a lot of people have spent a lot of time planning that perfect spot to see the eclipse. In Texas, the severe weather looks like it's going to hold off until the eclipse is finally done, but then after that, later on, coming home from the eclipse, could be looking at stronger storms over into the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Continuing our track off toward the north and east, Nashville, your weather is looking pretty good. Hot Springs, Arkansas, also looking good. Our next stop will take us over to Little Rock, a mix of sunny clouds, but other than that, looking at temperatures that are going to be quite warm and the sky coverage just perfect out there. Evansville, Indiana, and then as you head into Indiana, Bloomington and Indianapolis, we've seen a lot of people in Indianapolis. Skies partly cloudy, temperatures in the mid 70s, and then as we head over toward Cleveland, it had rain earlier this morning. That rain is now cleared on out. We are going to look for sun and clouds, but you'll be able to still see the eclipse. Temperatures just around 70 degrees. And and then head over toward Buffalo. We're looking at temperatures in the lower 60s. Not the greatest conditions to view the eclipse, but still hopefully a few breaks in the clouds and you'll be able to see it. And then finally, farther off toward the north and east over toward Burlington, looking at a mix of sun and clouds, more clouds than sun. Temperatures on the cool side around 60 degrees. And then we head way, way off into Maine where it looks a little bit better. They're saying that uh, parts of Maine will be the best viewing in the entire country with lots of blue sky. Still some snow on the ground up there. That's too. right. Chilly. <laughs> All right, the anticipation is growing along the path as the clock ticks down to totality. It arrives in Springsboro, Ohio, in southwestern Ohio, a little over an hour, in a little over an hour, and lasts for about 90 seconds. Meteorologist Natalie Walters from our station in Dayton is there right now. Natalie, how are people there getting ready for totality? Yell as loud as you can. Hey guys, it is amazing the crowd that has uh, shown up for today. Thousands of people in the Springboro community, and I'm sure we've seen some people from elsewhere kind of traveling their way into the path of totality. It was about seven minutes or so ago that we started to see a little bite of the sun taken out by the moon, and then eventually at 3.10 p.m., we will approach totality. But as you can see here, we got uh, live music. This is actually from the local high school in town. And we have about thousands of people that have shown up for today. They're giving away a thousand free glasses for the first thousand that show up. You have those bounce houses. We have uh, snow cones. We have food trucks. There's coffee. It is overall uh, a great time here. And the weather has shaped up beautifully. So far, we do have some of those high cirrus clouds that have uh, made their way into the area. But for the most part, uh, it should just be filtered sunshine. You should be able to see enough of the sun to really get a good glimpse of our total solar eclipse. We're gonna be in totality for about a minute and 40 seconds, but take a look at the lines going into these food trucks. And then of course the kids are all lined up for uh, Kona ice. So I'm gonna be live out here and I'm gonna enjoy totality in uh, about an hour from now. So you guys have fun back in the studio so much fun out there even just waiting for it and again we're getting so close uh, as you'll see in just a moment hey we are going to keep watching the sun in mexico but as we do we want to check back with our team here waiting for its arrival noblesville is right in central indiana totality arrives in one hour and lasts for three and a half minutes lynette grant is a meteorologist at our station in south bend she's at a moon market at a local park lynette are people getting excited out there in indiana Oh my gosh, people have been so excited as the hours have approached getting ready for the eclipse. Now we got here at around 930 this morning and outside of some of the vendors and people setting up, we were one of the first, but I can tell you it got crowded very quickly. Organizers telling me that there were probably 750 people at this ticketed event alone. Now this is just one spot in Hamilton County, Indiana that has events going on. We are just starting to see the moon. 
eclipse the sun here locally. A lot of people around me getting very excited, starting to put their glasses on. But I do want to show you what we're seeing in the area right now. Lots of people sitting down with the lawn chairs, already starting to look up at the sun. They've even got several pairs of giant eclipse glasses out here in Hamilton County. It's something people are taking pictures of to have some keepsakes for today. But we are about an hour away from totality happening and it started at around 1 51 p.m. Totality specifically lasting three minutes and 22 seconds here. The time of that likely going to be 308. We're excited to see it and we're going to continue to bring you coverage all across the country of what it looks like. But for now, I'm Lynette Grant in Hamilton County, Indiana. Thanks so very much. Okay, so look at the image that you're seeing yeah. on the screen right now. Looks like it's almost dark. That is uh, the fact that we are just moments away here from totality in location one. Mazatlan, Mexico. That's right. We're so lucky we have a NASA solar physicist here to kind of walk us through what's happening right now. It's very hard to see unless you're looking right at it. Dr. Graham Kerr is in studio with us to kind of walk us through. This is Mazatlan, Mexico. We're looking through a telescope, through a, a lens and a tele a safety lens and a telescope, and we're about to get into totality. Can you walk us through? Are, are we seeing Bailey's beads? Is that what those little, tell me what I'm seeing here. That looks like more of a camera issue. But, no. <laughs> uh, what we'll start to see uh, is exactly what you said, Bailey's beads. And so that's because the moon uh, has structure. The moon has mountains and valleys. And as the last little bits of the sun's light try to peek through uh, those mountains and valleys, you'll start to see bead-like structures along mm -hmm. the side. And what we're seeing just there was a diamond ring. Mm -hmm. So that was the, the, the is final that a live bit. picture? Yeah, oh, uh, if that's live, then that yeah, Perfect. so that's what's called the, that's <laughs> the last bit of light coming through from the sun. And what we see now is totality. And if you wow. look wow. carefully there, as well as starting to see the corona as our eyes adjust, you're going to see some red bits around the sun's disk. Mm -hmm. That's the middle part of the sun's atmosphere called the chromosphere. And that's uh, equally uh, is complex and equally cool because I'm, I'm biased because I studied the chromosphere. But, uh, <laughs> but we see these red structures because the sun is glowing in hydrogen light and you see these kind of what are called prominences, uh, kind of protruding out from the sun. Uh, Is there anything we're going to see during this eclipse that we didn't see in 2017, given the fact that we're in this heightened solar activity yeah. right now? So as you said, we're at solar maximum, or we're approaching solar maximum right now, which means the sun's atmosphere is way more dynamic than it was in 2017. You've got <sighs> lots of, not only do you have lots of transient events, like flares and CMEs, the whole corona itself is just more dynamic and more active. And so we'll likely see lots of structure. We'll see lots of uh, what are called helmet streamers that are these mm -hmm. big kind of uh, uh, cap-like structures around the sun as well as poles. But unlike 2017, they'll be all over the, the sun's corona. Because it's more active. Exactly, right. so they won't just be at the, at the equator. Mm -hmm. If we're very, very lucky, you could potentially see a coronal mass ejection. Uh, it would have to be things aligning, but in 1860, we believe they did see this because there are lots of drawings of the, of, the, of the eclipse, and there's some features in those drawings that n look like what we now identify as a coronal mass ejection. Mm -hmm. So 1860, was that when the Carrington event happened? Wasn't that around the same that time? That was around the same time. Was, the Carrington event was a year before. That okay. was 1859. But heightened solar activity, Very, I'm guessing. Yeah, so the Carrington event was the biggest flare in CME we've, we've ever recorded. So, so this goes to, you know, we talk about all this research, uh, the special research that's taking place on many different levels when it comes to today's total solar eclipse. What do we hope to learn and why should people care? So uh, the sun is not just this kind of unchanging disk in the sky. The sun is actually really active. Like we're just saying, it kind of goes on these activity cycles of every 11 years, it goes uh, from being really active, then a few years later it's not active, then back again. But that activity affects us on the Earth. It affects um, technology and infrastructure. And so being, we have to study the sun in order to, under, or to predict and then try to mitigate those effects. Um, and what we see during eclipse is the middle part of the sun's corona. We see the lower and the mid corona. Mm -hmm. And that we're unable to study that area easily without an eclipse. Uh, but that's a really crucial layer for understanding these, uh, what we call space weather. Mm -hmm. So the generation of the solar wind is constant stream of particles coming out from the sun. It's also where we think coronal mass ejections or, or CMEs are accelerated. And also, as we were saying a minute ago, the sun is just more active right now. So we see a lot more structure in the corona. And that gives us a really neat opportunity to, to study 
uh, those monastic structures. And all that energy coming yeah, off of the exactly. sun ultimately impacts some of the technology on Earth. Exactly, yeah. Now as it starts to come out of totality, what should we be looking for? So you'll see everything kind of in reverse. You'll okay. see, if we're lucky, we'll see another diamond ring, but then we'll also see Bailey's beads again. Mm -hmm. So we'll see those kind of crevices coming out. And oh. as I'll say, uh, talking about safety as always, the minute you start to see the diamond ring appear again, put your glasses back on. Glasses back right. on. Got it. Why does it almost look like that white that's coming off of the sun, which basically is the glow, right? The yeah. light. Why does it almost look like it's wafting back and forth? So I think, I don't know if that wafting is uh, on the sun or if that's potentially clouds. clouds cover in, in Mexico right now. Because the sun, although these are very dynamic structures, the sun is very far away and it's very, very big. Yeah. So each how, of, how far is it away? It's, <laughs> it's uh, 93 million miles. Right. Uh, and so, um, and so, in fact, these you can kind of see on the on the lower right, um, there's a bit kind of a thing yes. shoving out from the sun. That's a, a probably a prominence or a loop. That is very bigger cool. than the Earth. And so these wow. things are huge. Wow. And so, although they are dynamic and they're moving, seeing it moving in real time is maybe a bit difficult. So I think all that kind of wispy motion right. is more likely to be clouds kind of But that little thing protruding. is bigger than the Earth. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the first, yeah. the first totality we, we were right. going to see here over the next hour and a half. This is very funny. All right, the post partial eclipse just started a few minutes ago in uh, Rochester, New York. Mm -hmm. The city on the shores of Lake Ontario in western New York will experience more than three and a half minutes of totality starting at 3.20 local time. That's where we find Jackie Napier and Rochester right now. Jackie, what is the atmosphere like there? Because I take it you're the, the, hey the weather there not bad, right? Yes. Hey guys, good eve or good afternoon. Excuse me. I'm here with the lovely Cola Rotolo family, who is the owner of Casa Larga Vineyard here in Fairport, New York. Just a beautiful site where we're seeing a lot of folks. Thank you so much. A lot of folks come out and enjoy. Tell me about the preparation for today. Oh, well, I should defer to my sister, Mary Jo, because she's done most of the preparation with the team, but I think they've worked really, really hard to put everything together to make sure that the, um, uh, that it goes off as, as well as possible. That's wonderful. Now, yeah. tell me about some of the visitors we're having. The visitors that we're having are from all over the country. Um, we've got about 50% of them coming from out of state and I think as far away as California. Um, some locals too and some that are you know local and have family that came in just for this. That's great. And tell us about the kind of day we're seeing out here. What are you anticipating for the eclipse feeling? Uh, we are anticipating that the clouds are going to move out, but I was just listening to Edwin, the um, expert from RIT, and he said that there, we'll be able to see it through the clouds, and maybe not the intense sun, but um, we should have a change in what the color looks like. It's going to be some type of an orange color, and then it, it will go dark. And when it goes dark, it's going to be cold. That's great. Now, I want to, uh, another small business owner right over here. We have a special treat. Tell me about what you designed here, sir. Well, we designed a solar eclipse necklace for today because it's passing over Rochester. It's a uh, uh, jet black Swarovski crystal set in a pewter uh, sunburst. Absolutely. And now tell me about how folks can uh, learn more about this if they're interested. They can go to uh, uh, our Gmail address. It's Jules Romanoff, J-U-L-E-S. Romanoff. We're going to have to go to break here in just a second. But let's take one more look out there at Mazatlan, Mexico. We'll be back with more Eclipse coverage coming up.
And welcome back to Eclipse Across America. We are now just 10 minutes from totality arriving in the United States. We will show it to you before we go to another break. But right now, we want to check back with our team of meteorologists and reporters along the path. That's right, Indianapolis is the largest U.S. city outside of Texas that's in that path of totality. Darkness arrives at 3.06 and lasts for 3 minutes and 47 seconds. Meteorologist Will Haney is there for us today. Is Indianapolis ready, Will? Good to see you. Yeah, great to see you guys as well. Thank you so much. Greetings from the Hoosier State. Uh, yeah, this park, we are at White River State Park. This is in downtown Indianapolis, and it is packed. They're estimating about 20,000 visitors to the park alone today, about 100,000 visitors to the city of Indianapolis. I want to just set the scene. Pretty much all around me, there's people on chairs, blankets, and now that we have a little bit of partial eclipse beginning, the excitement is just really building. I'm seeing more people picking up those glasses, putting them on their face, and we're starting to hear that reaction from uh, the kiddos out here and everyone from the young to the elderly it is it is just really amazing and I think that excitement will obviously continue to build for the next hour or so we are expecting as you mentioned that totality about 306 you know what's a crazy fact about totality over Indianapolis is the last time that Indianapolis would have seen a totality was way before total way before Indy was even a thing. It was back in 1205, which kind of speaks to the rarity of it. They average about every 400 years or so, but uh, yeah, really amazing. Over 800 years ago <laughs> was the last time we saw a totality in this exact spot I'm standing. Uh, so yeah, just an amazing uh, day ahead, and we are going to continue to uh, just keep watching. And of course, that totality conditions are looking fantastic here in Indiana. We just have a little bit of some high-level cirrus clouds, just those wispy ice clouds, but that's not really going to spoil the show. If anything, just filter that sun just a little bit. But overall, things are looking really good here. And the temperatures, it's like in the low 70s. It's perfect. So we'll send it back to you all in the studio. Um, that is great so to hear. Thank there. you so much. Yeah, they'll have some great shots for sure. All right, Veronica, check out this story. You know our meteorologist, Ed Piotrowski, mm -hmm. in South Carolina, Myrtle Beach, meteorologist. He traveled to Texas to go see the eclipse this week. Texas wasn't working out cloud-wise, so he hopped on a plane and went to Maine. So he's giving us a forecast from Maine. Let's check it out. All right, thanks, Veronica and Emily. Holton, Maine is a happening place right now. This small town of less than 6,000 people swelling to nearly 30,000 people all to witness the total solar eclipse. You can see a lot of the cameras behind me, but if we look down Main Street here in Holton, Maine, a lot of people arriving and there's still many more to come. We've already seen plenty of reports that I-95 is backed up for an hour outside of Holton, Maine. Folks are having a great time out here and the weather could not be better. It is perfectly sunny out here right now, probably the best weather anywhere along the path of totality in the United States. Folks are here eating. They're having a good time. They've got their eclipse glasses. And of course, we have NASA here as well. NASA is here because they're not only filming the actual eclipse, but they're doing all sorts of uh, different things to learn more about the eclipse as well. So it's an exciting time here in Holton, Maine. Once again, totality is around 3.32 p.m. here. That's when the moon will pass in front of the sun, blocking out all the sunlight. And all that's left is that magnificent corona just flying away from the center of the sun. I got to see the one in 2017. So to me, this is as good as it gets when you can see one of these total solar eclipse. We'll, of course, join you again for more reaction after the eclipse goes by here in Holton, Maine. For now, I'm Ed Piotrowski. Emily, I have to tell you, I think that is the bluest sky that I have seen so far with anyone checking out. That's a true chaser right there, exactly. too. Somebody who hops on a plane mid-event. All right, let's head back to Ohio, which is counting down the minutes to the arrival of totality. Greenville in western Ohio, that's about 90 miles just north of Cincinnati. It will go dark starting at 308 and stay that way for nearly four full minutes. That's where we find Chelsea Sick, our station in Cincinnati, Ohio, joining us live. Chelsea, oh, I know the anticipation is building there. Oh my gosh, it truly is building. We are starting to see that moon pass up in front of the sun. And then you said 3.08 is when we're going to see totality here. But we're starting to hear some people say they can feel a difference. It's getting a little cooler, uh, not as bright as it was just 5, 10 minutes ago. So starting to see a pretty big difference. We do want to show you. We're here at the Eldora Speedway, which is owned by Tony Stewart. And they have a screen here that is showing that moon passing in front of the sun where we are right now. 46 minutes until we see totality here at the Eldora Speedway. One cool thing that they're doing here is 
they're going to have fireworks halfway through uh, totality for the people who are here visiting hundreds of people here in Dark County at the Eldora Speedway. And what's really interesting about where we are is this is a very rural county. So having hundreds of people in one spot is pretty, pretty impressive. I haven't heard any issues on the roads here in this area. We know a lot of people were moving in throughout the weekend and last night we had some campers here uh, at the Speedway as well. And I'm here um, with a family that traveled all the way from Michigan. I know the, the Ridge family, you guys traveled from Central Michigan, stayed here last night. Billison, what are you most looking forward to? Uh, seeing the sun turn off. I mean, <laughs> it's going to be awesome. We haven't ever witnessed a solar eclipse or a total solar eclipse anyway, mm -hmm. but we're really excited to see it. And girls, I know you're excited too. What are you lo most looking forward to? I'm looking forward to hear all the crickets right. when it's dark. I, that is going to be crazy. And the fireworks, yeah. I know you're excited for too. Mom, why here? Why did you want to travel to this part of Ohio? Well, we were really looking forward to the race last night, but due to weather and how wet the track was, that didn't happen. But still a good family event. Absolutely, be out absolutely. here. Forty-five minutes. Together. Yeah, forty-five minutes. What are you? What are the anticipation? What are you really feeling right now? I, we can already tell that the temperature's changing mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. It's definitely not as bright as it was. Yeah. yeah so. Not as bright as it was. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. Enjoy. Okay. Thanks. All right. It's a beautiful day here in Dark County. We're really not seeing many uh, clouds in the sky at all. I know that's been a worry for a lot of people. Right now, we're not having any issue seeing the sun as this begins. Back to you all. So much. Hey, we're now just minutes away from totality arriving in Texas. We'll continue to watch it and we'll bring it to you full screen before it begins. All right now, let's go head up to Oswego in New York. We're just north of Syracuse along Lake Erie. Totality arrives in a little less than an hour, but Connor White is there right now. Connor, tell us what's happening up there in New York. How's the sky looking? Hi, good afternoon. We're here in Breitbeck Park in Oswego. It's a city of about 17,000 people, but that population has gotten a lot bigger with people coming in from all over the East Coast to be able to enjoy the day today. Everyone say hi. Who's excited for the eclipse? You guys? All right, we're over here on Lake Ontario. The weather has been nice for the most part, but we also have some cloud coverage. So some people are nervous. Partial coverage is beginning to happen with the sun, so you'll see some people looking up. They've got legitimate equipment up here as well, but it's a big party. And part of that party, of course, is live music. And in the flesh, we have In the Flesh, a Pink Floyd cover band. How are you guys doing today? We're doing very good. good we're man. very excited to be here and just can't wait to play for everybody. So it'll be a lot of fun. And you guys are all local, right? Yes, uh, most of us are from a but the two backup singers are from Syracuse. Gotcha. So what does it mean to see this many people here in your backyard for really a once in a generation for some folks once in a lifetime event? Oh, we love it for yeah, sure. Really it. It's Absolutely. Gonna be awesome. uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Too. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now, yep. Pink Floyd, a lot of people will know the main album. A lot you can do with the lyrics. Absolutely. You guys have any puns set up for today? Not really. Um, I don't think so. I think we're just going to play what we normally play and call it good and everybody will enjoy it, I'm sure. Yeah. All right, perfect. Well, guys, thank you so much. You're on at 3 o'clock. Everyone is looking forward to totality at around 320. While we have some cloud coverage, it's not total overcast, so we should be able to see something when that totality occurs. I'll throw it back to you guys. Reporting in Oswego, I'm Connor White. Sing tech. All right, thank you so very much, Connor. Uh, we're taking a look at some of the uh, images there. It's going to stay up on the screen throughout the show. These are live images from different locations. We're looking at Junction, Texas right now, and I want to bring back in uh, NASA astrophysicist Dr. Graham Kerr. What are we seeing right now? I'm seeing more white versus the yellow and uh, gold that we were seeing earlier. So that's probably, um, so we're still seeing a partial eclipse. So we're still seeing the, the moon kind of eating a chunk out of the sun as it goes towards totality. The color we see is probably related to the filter uh, of the telescopes. Maybe some of the yellow images we saw earlier were uh, using filters to block out more of the light, mm -hmm. whereas that these white light images we're seeing are probably just a kind of a regular regular telescope. Mm -hmm. And the specific location that's northwest of uh, Abilene, is that right? San, uh, San Antonio, just northwest of San Antonio. So when we see it go dark, it's kind of, that's when clouds kind of come in and it ruins our shot and then we hop to the <laughs> yeah. next one. So uh, definitely some cloud cover out there affecting things today, but we can't control that. What we can control is what we learned from you, Dr. Carr. I want to hear a little bit more about the eclipse. And we were talking about the differences earlier between this one and the one in mm -hmm. 2017. One of the differences, these lengths of totality. 
So we're talking in some places up over four minutes. We just saw that in, in Mazatlan. And then one thing that I, happened in 2017 that I wasn't aware of was this test that NASA did with jets flying through the path of totality. And obviously, they can't fly at the speed of which the the shadow is going because mm -hmm. that would be, you know, what, like 1,500 yeah. miles per hour. Okay. Yeah. So, but they're going fast enough. They are extending their totality. Can you tell me a little bit about this mission that these jets are doing? Yeah. So these are uh, some WB-57 jets that are flying at hundreds of, uh, hundreds of miles an hour, and they're trying to extend their, their length during totality by a couple minutes or so. Uh, and what they're doing is also flying really, really high up. They're at 50,000 feet. And that lets them not only get longer totality, but it lets them look at the, uh, the eclipse using different types of, of light. So as well as visible light, they're going to be looking at infrared light, mm -hmm. which means they're above the part of the atmosphere that the water vapor blocks infrared light. So they're able to get these really, really uh, high resolution, really fast images of the lower corona like we wouldn't see on the ground. Amazing, it looks like they're in space. No, right. <laughs> All right. We're gonna hear more from Dr. Carr in just a minute. Let's head to break here. Yeah, we're gonna right. see more totalities coming up. of Eclipse Across America continues after this. From the National Weather Desk, this is live coverage of the eclipse across America. Come back. Totality has now arrived here in the United States. Over the next hour, the shadow will move from Texas to Maine. That's right. This will give you goosebumps even watching right now. Places along the path near San Antonio are dark or about to become dark. Let's join live coverage from our stations in Austin and San Antonio as they get reaction to totality. PI is going to sounding be rockets off okay, here while uh, the in preparation here is, is for sound, our APEP right? mission, we were the atmospheric the, perturbations the the around the eclipse to path here and at to NASA. Experience the, the, the eclipse like that. But whether you can see it or not, just the idea of the quietness and mm. the stillness, there is something to be said for having that in your life, whether it's for four minutes, mm. 34 seconds, or an hour and a half. The idea that you can just sit and sort of calm everything down. Uh, we heard Chris eloquently describe it earlier, I don't know if it was this morning or earlier at noon, but talking about just, it's an experience. It's an emotional, yeah. mm -hmm. and in many ways it's been described as a religious experience. Mm -hmm. um, whether you feel that way or not, the emotion of it uh, is certainly something that you can enjoy with hopefully friends and family. I'll tell you what, it is really fun as we've been going to a lot of these different shots today with our crews to see everybody Heads up, glasses on, yeah, eyes to yeah. the sky, all doing the same thing. Look at that. And this is still Eagle, Eagle Pass, Pass on the left hand and, side. And here in San Antonio, 
when I said it was darker two minutes ago, it's even darker now. It's mm -hmm. just going to continue to do that as we get closer to, to uh, totality wow, here. look at that. Look at Concan. So, completely dark. Yeah. So, look at so, that. So, I'm laughing because I'm thinking of the conversation, Jeanette, we had earlier this week when you said, you're still going to get something, stuff, David. Yeah. You're still going to get this amazing experience. It looks, like, it's it looks like it is 12 o'clock at night. We weren't sure just there it how is. dark it was. Corona! Let's listen we got a Corona! They're excited. They're yelling Corona. That's, so they I don't have a break in the it. clouds there, and they are experiencing totality or just about. They must have gotten okay, a full hear picture of that. Wow, it just gave me chills to hear yeah. them all cheering. Guys, are we, uh, when I say guys, I'm talking to the our producers in the booth. Are we able to, to go live to, to Chris and, and uh, Mandy to see what I'm they're... I'm hearing you guys. I can go live. So what are you seeing? Can you can you tilt the camera? Can we see that? Oh, okay. you can hear me. Great. Yeah, we can hear yes. you. That you guys, all right, amazing. we're live right now. Everybody give us a cheer. This is amazing. Mandy, can we see the corona up there? So, we, I don't know, I think you guys might have seen it for just a second. And I said, look, look, look. And all of a sudden we saw it. fire? And it's just, you know, it's, it is so cool. Um, yeah, there's people with their phones out. So I heard you say, is that a fire? No, no, no fires. Um, somebody's got their phones. This is the wildest thing, though, because we went from having the sun yeah. and then all of a sudden the birds took flight and it started getting darker and darker. Look and now that. it's just pitch black, which you, is what we knew was going to happen. But it's weirder being in it. Right? Do, do you hear the distant roaring around our location, too? Yeah. Everyone enjoying it and taking yeah. in these moments, yeah. not just here on our deck, but around us. We could hear all the eclipse parties. Chris, you were and so that moment we had of the sun with just that little hint of the outline, a little bit of the Corona so outer, outer atmosphere. So cool. So cool. And the temperature has dropped. We're down four degrees from our peak. It got dark there fast. Very fast. And Chris, you've been talking to us all morning about the the emotions of this all. What, yeah, what's going if we through? Look into one more. What's going through uh, your mind right now, looking I, at I this? I have my IP in right now. Oh. Mandy, can oh, you look at that? Oh, it's, it's, back. it's back. Right there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. Oh, that answered that question. <laughs> so lucky. <laughs> there, so lucky right now. There's the emotion. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. And I, oh my gosh, I it's so beautiful. I think the way it comes and goes almost makes it more dramatic. Wow. Yeah. Uh, he, he um, whoever, I think that was Chris Suchan, but whoever said the word lucky. Yeah, we can see I, the stars. I think that is stars. incredibly see appropriate. Stars. There's uh, one right humble. there. Uh, it's burning now. Look we'll at take a look at burning. It's black wow. there and burning now, too. We were just showing you shots of this a minute or two ago. and. You could still see what was going on. You could see the lake there. Let me, let me try to call and in. This Here's is a shot from Kerrville. Looks like they are experiencing totality right now. Just again, a reminder, we have uh, six or seven cameras and crews set up all over South Texas and Texas in different parts. Uh, so you're seeing Kerrville. We're going to jump around and see what they're seeing as that path of totality sort of makes its way through Texas. Uh, this is UTSA. Again, this is. is this Look is an area where is. they weren't expecting very much at all, mm -hmm. and this is certainly uh, breathtaking, uh, humbling. So uh, we are even. at 1:34 right now. That is when we were supposed to start experiencing totality right here in San Antonio, from 1:34 until 1:36. And if you look outside our studio door right now, it's pitch black in our parking pitch lot. Black. We've got the parking lights on out there, and uh, this is con can again. Um, so wow. jump, jump, I got chills, guys. Look at this. Jeanette, are you, uh, let's see if her microphone's on. The, the, the temperature and what you're feeling from a, just a meteorological point of view, it's done everything that you guys predicted, yes? Yes, yes. Uh, so I opened up the door, and it's funny because the birds around here, uh. you should see the way they're turning around their necks. They're like, what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> um, it is completely, it's almost completely dark. That's uh, incredible. It's, yeah, it's completely dark. The temperature has cooled down at the top of the noon show. It was at 76. It's closely closer to 73. Still muggy outside. Ooh. So despite the huh. clouds, go outside. It's dark. <laughs> and there's some fireworks at UTSA, too. S just let that Ooh. statement sink over. 1.35 in the middle of an April afternoon. Right. And we're looking at, at fireworks. fireworks. Visible fireworks. Gorgeous. And look at that. Show. Where's that? That looks like... Okay, but this, this, that, this, I believe, is the con can That's con can, yeah. Um, um, that's just the, the, incredible. The cheers, the emotion. Um, oh, that's oh, this is burning. I got to be honest. I'm, uh, 
I'm taken back by it. This is I, I was I was a little bit of a cynic uh, <laughs> leading up to this, thinking, well, the clouds are coverage. How good could it be? What are we going to see? So, you know, I have a hard time believing that. You came in this morning at 5 a.m. and he was handing out glasses to everybody like it was Christmas Every, morning. I just, there's a giddiness here. Beautiful uh, as, as, as folks, oh, we're, oh. who are we listening to? Who's that? Oh, I think we're looking at a shot from Bernie okay. on one side of the screen there. All okay. right, so oh, okay. Mandy and Chris, uh, who have been in ConCan, I got to ask Chris. Chris, can you hear us? There they are. Hey, the yes, lights are back on. Oh, the, Chris, everything's light again. So a shout out to That's you. That's right. Totality's done. A, a shout out to you. Earlier in the morning, you set the stage. You kind of set it up to where you promised, essentially, this emotional experience, this visceral experience that people right, will feel. Back here to the I National Weather Desk coverage in uh, Washington, D.C. We want to talk to our expert that we have here on set. We had some great views there from Texas, mm -hmm. where totality is just happening. It's finally here in the United States. Things are going to move quickly now. NASA solar physicist Dr. Graham Kerr is joining us to talk about some of the stuff that we're seeing here in these images. So what did we just see out of Texas? So what we saw there was totality. So the, the moon was completely covering the sun, and instead of having all that bright disk, all we could see was the sun's outer atmosphere. Um, what was really neat in those pictures is you probably saw that kind of red glow around the disk as well as the corona. That means we're seeing two parts of the sun's atmosphere. We're seeing the wispy white part of the corona, and the red part is the chromosphere, and that's the thin kind of uh, really dynamic part below the, the corona. So it was really cool, you could see both. And it was, uh, looked like it was peeking through the clouds, which is great for all my colleagues who are down in Texas. Uh, I was going to say, chromosphere is your jam, right? Yeah. This is what you study, so you're right. pretty excited about seeing this. So that is really you know, what, what we're able to see of the sun. But mm -hmm. for locations along the path of totality, there can be a lot more in the sky that we can um, check out, uh, i.e. some of our planets, Mars, Mercury. What, what are some of the other planets? That's right. So it's actually a bunch of the planets are going to be kind of in the right place to see. The brightest ones will be uh, Venus and Jupiter. But if we're lucky, if you've got really clear skies and, it, and, and your eyes are adapted enough, you might also see Mars. You might see Mercury, although Mercury is quite dim. There's also a comet out there, so Comet 12P, uh, that is going to be, I think, on the top uh, left of the sun, if you uh, kind of see a comet with two little tails. So there, there are, yeah, there's a bunch of other things going on in the sky because the sun is, uh, is no longer Right. Are you shedding everything that we, we can see? Yeah, so in some ways that, that would be the ultimate to see see everything all at once uh, in the sky, which some is really stuff to day. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it's hard to believe, yeah. right? Right in the middle of the afternoon. All right, now because the weather is going to be amazing in Maine, we want to mm -hmm. head up there and uh, plenty of eclipse chasers have even changed their plans and headed north to Maine. That's now Portland is right. not actually in the path of totality, but Wrangley in western Maine is Rangely, I'm sorry, the town which sits halfway between the equator and the North Pole reaches totality just before 3.30. Portland reporter Mal Meyer joins us now. Mal, are crowds any bigger than expected out there? <laughs> Well, you know, in talking to the town manager and even the Chamber of Commerce uh, last week, I felt like they were kind of trying to tamp down temp, uh, expectations of this, right? They didn't want to say, we're going to see absolutely gigantic crowds and maybe nobody shows up or, you know, say too little and then all of a sudden everybody's here. Uh, you know, they were expecting somewhere, maybe a few thousand people, some estimates had it even higher, but looking around here, I mean, it's been jam-packed. We've been here for hours now at the scenic overlook. We're about a mile outside of um, the downtown kind of area, if you will of town. Uh, there are plenty of people here. People have been posted up here since the early morning. I wouldn't be surprised if some people even tried to snag their spot last night uh, because the parking lot is absolutely packed. Uh, we have cars on the street as well. Um, so and that goes down for quite some time. Now, earlier today, I brought a map with me and I want to show you guys because we've been asking people where have they traveled from? Obviously, we knew that uh, you know people might come from you know other parts of Maine, where you know the drive might only be a few hours, or New Hampshire or Vermont. But then, of course, you know last week we saw the forecast, and a lot of the U.S. where the path of totality was running through, uh, that was all covered in clouds. And so I've been talking to people. We've been getting some people as far away as San Diego down there. We had Utah, Arizona, Colorado. 
Texas. I know that we just heard um, it sounded like it was pretty spectacular down in Texas, but you know, some people were looking at this forecast and thinking, oh my gosh, I need to get moving. I need to come to Maine. And so they came here and they were able to reroute. I had uh, talked to one guy a short time ago. He was uh, originally going to Rochester, New York. And he said, you know what? I'm not taking my chances. I'm gonna come to Maine. They scoped it out on the map. They were able to find uh, a place where they could stay overnight and they were able to, to reroute their plans and come here to Rangeley. So um, a lot of excitement over here. I've also been asking people, you know, just how many times they've seen the eclipse. We've had a lot of people who have said, I've never seen it, not once, not a partial, not a total solar eclipse. Other ones said, you know, maybe I've seen a partial solar eclipse, but it wasn't that much. Others have been able to see, see the total solar, solar eclipse, but it's been, in some cases, decades. So, you know, once you see it, though, it is a spectacular sight. It's already started now, so in about an hour from now, uh, we're going to be coming back and showing you that total solar eclipse. For Born Live in Rangeley, I'm Mel Meyer. Back over to you in the studio. Thanks so very much. Right now, we want to take you to Wallops Island in Virginia. NASA it just launched one of three rockets before, during, and after the eclipse. Okay, so you've got another one that uh, is going to be coming up a little later. The mission is to study aspects of the sun, the Earth, that can only happen during an eclipse. And one rocket goes up, of course, before, as mentioned, then you've got two more coming up. Uh, these are also going to be ejecting four soda bottle size instruments within the path of totality. Dr. Kerr, tell us what types of experiments, what measurements these will be taking. Yeah, so, so these rockets are looking to understand what the ionosphere, which is a layer of the Earth's atmosphere that is full of charged particles. They're looking to see what the behavior is like before the eclipse, so that's what the rocket they just launched. What's going to happen during the eclipse is going to be a, a rocket launch will um, uh, well, the totality is happening, and there's going to be a rocket launch after the eclipse to see how quickly things come back to, to their natural state. And they're going to be measuring the density, how many charged particles there are, and the temperature, and basically how the ionosphere responds to the sudden removal of the sun's, sun's light, because the sun's uh, light, especially ultraviolet light, um, interacts with the ionosphere, kind of sets the size of the ionosphere and, and things like this. And so that changes during an eclipse. Right, and, and, and during a typical day, we gradually go to darkness versus very abrupt like That's this. Right. So there would uh, be some changes uh, in the atmosphere that we can't see. Exactly, so these, these changes happen kind of on a cycle all the time, as you had night and day. But when there's a sudden change in the ultraviolet and the optical light from the sun, you get disturbances. And in fact, during solar flares, that can happen too. So by studying under a very controlled environment mm -hmm. of an eclipse, we can tr try to understand how does the Earth's atmosphere respond to space weather and, and things like that. So we're trying to improve our space weather forecasting yeah. skills. Yeah. Awesome. All right, we're going to hear a lot more from you, Dr. Carr. We're going to keep picking your brain about all of this. We're going to keep checking in with those paths of totality, all of our spots up through the path uh, over the next hour Look at and that, 15 what's minutes. What's on the screen right now, Emily? Our coverage Amazing. of Eclipse Across America continues in just two minutes.
welcome back to Eclipse Across America. Happy Eclipse Day. Now we want to return to some of the cities in totality. In just a few minutes, the skies will do, go dark in Hutchtown, Oklahoma. That's right, Oklahoma City reporter Katie Arata is there. We touched in with her earlier. Show us what's going on now, Katie. Sounds very exciting. Yeah, guys, we <laughs> just got to the totality right now. People are cheering. You can hear them here around me. Everyone's so excited. We're able to actually uh, see the moon right now. Um, we weren't sure if the clouds were going to subside enough, but as you can see there, we are able to see it. It just got a little bit cooler out. It feels a lot cooler than just a couple of minutes ago, and it definitely looks like nighttime out here. This is a crazy experience. People are taking pictures and, and just enjoying this for the next couple of minutes. We have a total of four minutes of totality, so we have about, I think it just happened just about a minute ago, so we probably have at least two or so minutes left, and we have our glasses ready for when it starts to move over just to be safe um there we go there's some light for you so got our glasses it's really dark out here this is just a crazy experience and definitely something that you can we'll, we'll remember sorry for the rest of your life for sure Katie's breath is taken away. Yes. I can tell when somebody's seen an eclipse for the first time because she's so excited. Yeah, she just can't believe it's, it's dark so in the middle of the day. For so many people. I mean, there are people who are moved to tears when they see their first totality. Yeah. All right. Well, just down the road, we also have, uh, we want to check in with Joy Betterhausen, who's in Broken Bow. And uh, I think totality happening there as well. Joy, are you there? Yes, we are at totality right now. You can see my photographers got it on us. We have everyone taking photos, taking videos. It's it's kind of still. We got a, an applause at first, right when we when we right when we reached totality, and then everything went still. We've got our street lights on. It is dark. It looks like nighttime, and this is definitely an event to remember. My photographer said. I get it now. I understand why people come to this. And this is my first time ever experiencing totality. We're downtown uh, in Idabel right now, Oklahoma, and everyone is out. We did have a lot of festivities going on, food trucks, a lot of people setting up their telescopes, you know, lining the parking lots. And now it's almost still. It was about five minutes ago, just before we reached totality, where we saw the birds kind of come out flying around looking for, you know, spaces to go underneath. But it is just beautiful. We only have about two minutes or so to really look at this with the naked eye before we got to put our glasses back on so everyone is just taking in this awestruck moment right now i believe we have totality for about four minutes here in idabel we've been in it for about a minute or two now so everyone's taking in grabbing those photos because our next one won't be until 2045 within the state of oklahoma it's definitely silent right now but i think we'll start to see you know people picking up the crowds picking up lots of cheers once we get out of this and i think we're all going to remember this moment forever once again we're in downtown idabel enjoying the sights and i'm to kick it back over to you guys. Oh, Joy, we're just starting to see that diamond ring. I can hear those cheers. Can you tell us how it feels as a meteorologist? Can you feel it cooler? Do you notice anything around you happening? Yeah, oh yeah. No, we felt it start to cool off about I'd say 20 to 30 minutes ago, you could definitely notice the difference. It was very hot. Temperatures are right around 80 down here. It was very steamy because we have storms coming in later tonight. Mm -hmm. So you could feel all the moisture starting to push in. But it's, it feels almost like the Midwest and we are in Oklahoma, right? Nice little breeze, nice cool air. It definitely doesn't feel like April, it feels more like February around here. But now that we're out of totality, good chance we're gonna start heating up again within the next 30 minutes. And Joy, this is meteorologist Veronica Johnson here. I've got a question for you. Do you see a lot of people who are just taking it in the moment versus holding up their phones and cameras and trying to take photos of the event where they're just in the moment? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, you heard, you know, the crowds go silent. Once we could view it with our naked eye and put the glasses down for a second, everyone was just looking up in awe. It was definitely a sight to see. First time for me to see it. I saw it back in 2017, but it might only been about 50%. Uh, okay. So yeah, everyone kind of just put their phones down for a second, just took it in and really enjoyed the sights. Joy, great job. Thanks so very much and have a blast out there. Okay. So cool, that quiet kind know, of gave me goosebumps because right? the chills, you know, of like yeah. the, the cheering crowd, but then quiet. the silence. I haven't heard that before. All right, we're going to check in now with our live coverage in Arkansas as we join KATV in Little Rock, Arkansas. Oh my God. And we have totality and, and in Arkansas. Oh. And take, take off your glasses. glasses. There's the diamond wow. ring effect. And the diamond ring effect. 
There it is. Brilliant. We've got four minutes of this. Enjoy. We have 360 sunrise around us. Yep. Look in every direction. Mm -hmm. The I've colors of the I've never seen anything like this, guys. <laughs> we have talked about this for years. Wow. And the moment is even better <laughs> than you could have anticipated. Look at that. The corona of the sun. You see the, the, the rays emitting out from the sun, the gas that emits out. And you're looking straight at it. We hear fireworks in the <laughs> distance. <laughs> okay, there's Venus. There's Jupiter. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, I think you'll start to see a few more stars uh, then popping out as your eyes adjust. There's one. Look how beautiful the horizon is if you're anywhere where you can see it. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely still. Uh, listen for crickets and... You know, the animals, insects, they think it's nighttime. You're watching live coverage of the eclipse across Texas, sponsored by Visit Again, Uvalde County, Texas. In Arkansas, this Welcome will back, last everyone. To anywhere from two minutes to about four minutes and 15 seconds. <laughs> but it's the best four minutes and 15 <laughs> seconds of your life. Look at the look at the craft. Is that a, I wonder if that's a satellite or a... Oh, uh-huh. Yeah, so some of the people are saying, what planets? So I think planet? the, to the, the right. big one to the right, I believe, is Jupiter. And then you've got, uh, I believe, Venus over to the left side, if mm -hmm. you're uh, looking out there. I, I do have to tell you, I've, I've experienced it without clouds and with clouds. And with clouds, you can't see it quite as well, mm. but it's even darker mm. outside. But this is, uh, it's unbelievable. You can see little... Little pieces of, uh, of light coming. We're still not past. Uh, we still have plenty of time to go right here in the middle of the shadow. I've seen a lot of flashes twinkling over here. I wonder if that's some of the craft that have been uh, up to do research. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think so. Balloons. A lot of, yeah, some of the balloons. This is a long four minutes. Four first timers, how how... How does it compare to your expectation? I'm, I'm <sighs> savoring every second of this. It's it's unbelievable. It, I'm it's, just hoping it's... everything goes back to normal, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to believe it's 1.52 Central Time on a, a Monday afternoon in Arkansas, but it is. Totality is followed by third contact. That's when uh, the moon will start to move away from the sun's uh, disk, revealing the bright light. And as soon as you see that bright light again, you're going to want to put your... Eclipse glasses back on to protect mm -hmm. your vision. But in the meantime, we can savor this without the glasses. I'll never forget this moment, uh, sharing this with, with you guys, the team with the most experience. <laughs> yeah. It is a privilege. This is an experience to add to that, for right. sure. Yeah, you can tell. I, I think we're back up on camera, mm -hmm. but you can tell just how dark it is. Now... I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but on in the distance to the southwest, you're starting to see it getting a little bit lighter because yep. the shadow is leaving that southwestern part of the state. I, I, I'm so glad that we're in the middle of the path, but no matter what it is, it's just amazing. Well, we do hope that you're enjoying this at home as much as we are here in Conway County at the Winthrop Rockefeller Institute. Arkansas, as thousands, millions, enjoy the path of totality through our state. And Melinda, you mentioned that there is another totality city. Totality in Arkansas yes. right now. Dr. Okay, here Car Care, um, we've been seeing totality now for a couple of minutes. Um, there's some cloud cover. There looks like a little bit of cloud cover, but folks are still able to get just enough of it to get some great views and probably some great photos. Uh, for that location, one in every 400 years, there might be a totality happening in any one location in the U.S. Uh, why so long? Why do we have to wait so long for that? That's uh, primarily because the Earth is mainly water. And so the chances of an eclipse happening where people live is just tiny. Because it only happens once every 18 months or so. Um, and it, as we've seen in some future eclipses, the next eclipse in the States is going to be in 2033. Next total eclipse. 
2033, but it's only going to cross some really narrow swath of Alaska. So sometimes it only crosses really narrow parts, sometimes for not very long. And so it's just kind of on average every 400 years or so. Although, as we've seen with the 2017 eclipse, there's a few places in the States that have had it. Uh, <laughs> only by a few years separated, which is quite, uh, quite remarkable. It does feel, it, it, when people say once in a lifetime, I'm like, well, I kind of saw one a few years yeah. ago. It doesn't feel that long ago. Let's talk a little bit about the um, citizen science that's going mm -hmm. on during this eclipse. Yeah. Can you explain what that is and how people who aren't scientists are helping NASA yeah. learn more about this? So, um, so citizen science is when uh, scientists like myself ask for help from average people who may not know much about science, but they've got an interest and they want to help. And so, of course, there's uh, a bunch that NASA do all the time, but we have some eclipse-focused citizen science efforts going on right now that you can still help with. So if you have not reached totality in your locale yet, you can still help. And so one example is called SunSketcher. Mm -hmm. And so you can download the SunSketcher app, and you can take images during totality. Your phone's metadata will send the pictures and all that information to some of my colleagues. And they're using that, that data of the first contact of Bailey's beads, those kind of bright uh, kind of uh, beads of light. We're gonna check back. We're sure. gonna check back with you in just a minute. We gotta go to break right now, but we want to hear the rest of that right afterwards. <laughs> From the National Weather Desk, this is live coverage of the eclipse across America. And good afternoon. It's now 3 o'clock in the east, 2 o'clock central time, and we still have 35 minutes before totality leaves the United States. It is happening right now. The partial eclipse as the moon moves away from the line between the sun and the earth will continue in some places until 4 o'clock. And total began about one minute ago in Carbondale, Illinois. Julia Rosier, she joins us now live. Julie, describe what you're seeing and how people are reacting. Looks like totality maybe has started there. Yeah, that's right. Totality is happening right now here in Carbondale, Illinois. We want to give you a quick look because the countdown is on until the end of it. Now take a look at the sky. You can see it's gotten incredibly dark, almost as if it is sunset here in Carbondale. You can see it is absolutely beautiful. It's a little bit quieter than it was in here in the stadium earlier. People are taking in the moment of a once in a lifetime unique experience at Saluki Stadium in Carbondale. 
totality is only expected to last for about four minutes and 10 seconds. But people here have been excited all day for it. The stadium here fits 15,000 people and there's over 11,000 people that came to Carbondale to watch the solar eclipse. But you can see people are out pointing at the eclipse, looking at it, taking pictures, taking in the moment. Really it's special. very, very beautiful. There's been entertainment here today. Back to you. All right. Thank you so much. That really is special. They'll, so Carbondale will stay in totality for four minutes. I said, you know, it's something that really is marvelous. It's wondrous to see how... <laughs> We were talking about once in a lifetime, but Carbondale, right. this is the second time in, what, seven years that they've gotten a total solar eclipse? It's How often that does that happen where there might be one location that gets it relatively close that, within a few years? That I do not know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Probably more often than we think, head. but I don't know. Sorry. All right. So, Dr. Kerr, you were talking earlier about citizen science and an app where people can still take yes. advantage of helping out NASA learn more about the eclipse. Can you finish that? Yeah, sure. So, uh, so this app, if you, you'll take images of totality as it starts and as it ends, and we'll my colleagues will use that information to measure the shape of the sun very, very precisely. And it might sound kind of weird. They might ask, do we know what shape the sun is? But we're trying to do it to better than one part in a million. And that's because we need that precision to really understand what flows and things are like on the sun. Because the sun's actually a gas, it's not a solid body. And so there's actually peaks and troughs in the sun's surface. And knowing that information to better than one part in a million will really help us understand things like how the solar cycle works, how solar features are formed. Uh, and so you, got, you all can help with it. Uh, if you're not reached totality yet, you can download the Sun Sketcher app. I think we all think phones. of the sun, right, as being a circle, but it's almost like it is, you know, it's ever moving, right, yeah. because of the atmosphere. So how does NASA describe the shape of the sun? Um, so it is almost spherical, but it is oblate, which means it's slightly squashed at the poles. And in fact, it's because of that, it's because of the gas where the poles are moving slower than the equator, that's why solar activity happens, we think. That's, so mm -hmm. the sun's magnetic field gets dragged up and twisted and stores a bunch of energy, and that's what creates the, the corona that, that we see here. So we were talking about space weather prediction and, and knowing when solar flares are gonna impact Earth and, and how there's still a long way to go here with that science. Yeah. We kind of got there with weather forecasting, I don't know, like 50 years ago, you know, satellites, right. radar mm -hmm. was invented. Do you think in 50, 60 years that we'll get to that point with space weather prediction? I hope so. So we've been doing a lot of work in that, try, in that effort to try to do it. And we're using lots and lots of data. And the more data we get uh, from, from the sun, the better our predictions uh, can get. And especially now that we have machine learning techniques, there's a lot of my colleagues are uh, putting in all the data from all the various sources we have into some machine learning networks to try to understand, okay, can, can these help us with the predictions? Would that even help us predict the northern lights? Um, yeah, so the northern lights uh, are uh, kind of enhanced by solar activity. Right. And so if we know there's going to be more solar activity, we'll know there's going to be more uh, intense or northern lights, or even the oval will expand so more parts of the country can, can see them. I say that, Dr. Kerr, because I'm really counting on a great forecast for 2026. Iceland 2026. Ooh. I want the northern lights and I want a total solar eclipse. Perfect. I want good pictures from you. That's on my bucket <laughs> list for sure. That's amazing. So that's kind of a perk that comes out of increased solar activity. We talk about some of the drawbacks too. Mm -hmm. Everybody kind of lost it a while back mm -hmm. when AT&T started right. working for right. a little bit and there were some rumors out there that it had to do with solar activity. Can you talk about what is impacted when there is this increased solar activity, if there is a flare, yeah. if there is a storm, a CME? So I think that particular case wasn't actually the sun, right. but <laughs> the sun can affect technology in various different ways. And so uh, if there's a flare that I, the Earth's ionosphere can expand, that can cause enhanced drag on satellites. So satellites can get lost or go off course. And so it's important that we let satellite operators know this might happen. You can get uh, what are called, uh, uh, the circuitry on satellites can get damaged by mm -hmm. single event upsets. And so again, we can put them in safe mode. In terms of uh, bigger impacts, uh, coronal mass ejections, if they impact the Earth in, in just the right way, that can induce currents in the atmosphere, that can affect power generation, so like transformers and power stations, it can make GPS not work. And that's important from anywhere from precision agriculture, if you're a farmer trying to plant your seeds every, uh, every, so, every fixed distance, 
to emergency services responding to hurricanes that we saw in Florida a few years ago. These can all get affected. Yeah, wow. right. so important. Can't so wait to learn more about that. Impacted. I think we're just uh, less than a couple of minutes away now right. from Totality in Ohio. We're uh, going to join our team in Columbus, Ohio. They're covering the eclipse from Maryville to Marion and Indian Lake. Let's listen in to WSYX. Hey, but I came from South Carolina. And you came from South Carolina. Yeah. Now, do you know these people? This is my son and my daughter-in-law. Son and daughter-in-law. Now, yeah. son over here, you have the better view out of all of us because you're one of the tallest people here. Is it any nicer this much closer to the moon and the sun? Uh, yeah, I feel a lot closer to it. You feel a lot closer. Are you going to have a very special time with your family today? Absolutely. Celebrating the, the hurricane's win yesterday and then watching the eclipse today. It's just a great time. Now, watch yourself because we're Blue Jackets fans, but today we're Eclipse right. fans together. Absolutely. bringing it into one and then back here sweet Chanel watching Chanel what does it look like right now it's like God it looks like God like maybe his thumbnail hey, is that maybe no, over here it what? looks gone oh it looks gone <laughs> It's, it's almost gone, and we're seeing that little sliver. We have the Deegan family over here. Now, this is something that you guys are experiencing together. You toured Kosai for a little bit. Yeah. How special is this literally once in a lifetime? Oh, so cool and so much better together. Right. It's one thing to experience it alone, but to have your kids, your daughters, your yeah. son, is that pretty amazing? Yeah, oh, amazing. Love it. Now, yeah. this your spot right here. Is this where you're going to be for the rest of the time? Yep, right here. There you go. Well, I will get out of the way, let you guys experience it. Again, it's cooler. It's getting darker, and if you happen to be up in totality, that's your opportunity to be able to look up. But right now, you can't look up without your glasses if you're in the central Ohio kind of Columbus area. But look at all these people just spanning. Again, it's cooler. The light has gone down, but people are a little quieter and more focused in as we reach that total point, the full effect of that moon going up. But, man, what an experience for these people. Again, traveling all the way from North Carolina, South Carolina. Carolina. I'm going to try to get this gentleman right here. He's looking around. Maybe you can't see it. Sir, how are you? Sure, I'm good. Where sir. are you from? I'm from Earth. You're from <laughs> Earth. Listen, we're all from Earth today. United Earth. United Earth. He's got the <laughs> We Are United Earth. I mean, Is this pretty cool to experience? This shows you already how united we are when we have phenomena, right? And that's a really that's good point. That's our common language. United right in one common language. Millions of people right now looking up at the sun and just that little sliver Bob State and Marshall. I mean, we are almost there, right, guys? It's the language. We are three minutes, three minutes officially for totality where we are at the Union County Airport. So we still have a few things that are likely to happen between here and there. Okay. So okay, Marcy, describe for? Bailey's beads for us. Sure. So Bailey's beads is actually really similar to another effect called the diamond ring effect. And this is going to happen. We want to talk about it now because it's going to happen like in the seconds before totality. So what happens with Bailey's beads is you, you start to see that crescent get smaller, smaller, smaller until it looks like beads on a string. That's Bailey's beads named after Francis Bailey, the first person who noticed them. Okay. But the reason it happens is because even though it kind of looks like it, the moon's surface is not smooth. Right. Oh, right. It has Talk about a bonding day. I mean, this is bringing folks together, just being oohed and odd by something <laughs> that is much bigger than ourselves, Emily. Millions of people along the path of totality. Are you a little oh, jealous that you're not outside right now? Um, maybe a little. <laughs> I'm getting some uh, photos here from my grandkids. Uh, so we're going to go now to KRC in Cincinnati, Ohio. They're also in totality. Definitely just a unifying experience for sure. Just everybody coming here for the same reason to experience this. Just so cool. It is absolutely beautiful. Wow. And you can see like a little star up there too. So gorgeous. And again, a lot cooler now than it has been all day when it was kind of heating up here. Wow, I mean, this is a really cool experience. When I worked in Wyoming, that was actually in the path of totality in Casper, but I didn't get a chance to step outside because I had to be in the studio. So seeing this for myself yeah. is such a really cool experience. And I know my family was like, how do you have two eclipses in the places where you live? But I guess I'm just that lucky, John. Oh. That is amazing, and I'm, I'm in totality here. I'm in totality in Oxford. I can see the sun's corona, which is the sun's atmosphere around the edge there. I mean, it is beautiful. I, I've, I'm feeling emotional. It's, it's kind of one of those strange feelings in the pit of my stomach, almost kind of a, a primal thing where I'm like, 
this is crazy. This is wild. I've never experienced this before. And the people here, they, they let out a big cheer as soon as we went under totality. We're going to be under totality here for just under three minutes. And I mean, you, this is the time when you're in the totality that you can look at it without protective glasses if you're in totality. And I mean, just looking at it, we can see stars right now. Skies are clear. Folks here just amazed by this sight. I want to come over here. I, I got to talk to the police officers that are here. Come on over. What do you think? What do you think? It's very impressive. It is. Yes. What's your name? Nicole Roberts. Nicole Roberts. Mm -hmm. and it, what, what, just, it's a weird feeling, isn't it? It is. It is like it's jumped ahead six or eight hours. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you for being out here with us today. Yeah, that is it here from Oxford. I mean, just, I can't even explain how this feels. It's just, it's surreal. It's, it's something unusual. It's something odd. And, and it just, it's beautiful. It is just incredibly beautiful. All right, let's see how things are looking up there in Dark County. Let's head back to Chelsea Sick now to see how totality is going up there. Chelsea, tell us about it. Hey, hey John, we've been in totality just about the same amount of time so far as you have. We are here for just under four minutes, we will be in totality. Take a look at this. Have you ever seen fireworks at three o'clock in the afternoon? This is in uh, Rossburg, Ohio, the Eldora Speedway, about two hours north of Cincinnati. We are in totality right now. Right after we went into totality, everyone was cheering, and then it was silent for 30, 45 seconds before these fireworks started. It was just an amazing, I think everyone is just in awe at what we're seeing here. Uh, it's just beautiful, and I'm here with Aaron. You traveled from Fort Wayne, uh, just north of Fort Wayne, yeah. Indiana, to be here. Just talk about this experience for you. You've never seen a total solar eclipse. Never, never in my life. This is the coolest thing, aside from the birth of my children, that I've ever seen in my life. It's just, there's not words that can explain this. Just looking up and seeing that, and it's, it's amazing. Okay. I, I, can't, yeah. I can't put it into words. And how did you all get here? Did you guys come today? Did you get Yeah, here? we came today. Uh, the kids, luckily, they canceled school, so we decided to hop in, and my family and I drove here to to see this, so my dad, my uh, stepmom, and all my family's here to watch it. It's it's amazing. Uh -huh. And you're, are your kids here with you yep, as well? Yep, that's them yep, up there. Yep, that's them. What there. were they looking forward to the most of this? Could they even understand what was they, going to happen? They didn't until they saw that, and mm -hmm. I could hear them from standing over here. That and one of them didn't even want to come, and I'm glad she. Did. Yeah. I said you'll you'll regret not seeing it because it's a once in a lifetime. Yeah, and you didn't even really know you know what to expect, no. but you knew this was a big deal. Yeah, because I saw the one in 2017, and it wasn't it wasn't a full so we didn't get the full effect so looking up at it right now it it almost brings tears to your eyes it's it's awesome it really does it's like almost like i don't even know what to, to say to describe it to people because i mean it, it happened pretty fast we're starting to see it get a little bit brighter out here but to see fireworks i mean i just can't get past this yeah, yeah. and they're beautiful i mean you can really see them talk about your experience driving down here did you all have any issues at all no surprisingly we came early we we heard that there may be a lot of traffic and then uh, once we got here we heard that in fort wayne it was bumper to bumper traffic on i-69 so we're glad we came early and avoided all that. Why the Speedway? Why Dark County? Uh, because we come here every year for the Eldora, either the Dream or the World, and uh, we're like, hey. <laughs> Those fireworks are really popping, huh? Right, yeah. Marvelous, spectacular. A lot of uh, minds being blown right now what they're seeing in front of them. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. All right, our live coverage of the Eclipse Across America rolls on after this short break.
From the National Weather Desk, this is live coverage of the eclipse across America. Continue to check in with some of the cities along the path of totality in just a moment. But one of the things that we've seen over the last hour or so now that we've been in totality is a lot of folks commenting just how they've been moved. I spoke with a NASA scientist, uh, Dr. Kerr, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he said if you can get to one, get to one, even if it means driving a couple of hours because you're going to be moved. This is something that will change your life. How so? Um, so the sun touches the Earth uh, in ways that we don't often think about. But seeing it in this fashion, seeing the, uh, the moon and the sun interact, kind of brings it home. In fact, so I've been studying this for uh, 10 years or more. But when I saw the total eclipse in 2017 in Oregon, it was like, oh, that's the thing that I, and I was seeing with my own eyes. That's the thing that I've been studying with satellite data or with computer simulations. And it kind of brought it all home. Uh, and this way, especially since um, so many people can experience it. It kind of hopefully will help people realize that the sun really does impact their lives in ways that they don't normally think about. It's also a good reminder that that's the center of everything, mm -hmm. that we're not the center of everything, well, and just how small and insignificant we are when you see right. you know, that we're just a small piece of this puzzle. It's mm -hmm. very fascinating. And mm -hmm. you were saying a reminder of our connection to outer space, and everybody has a fascination with space, right? Yeah, that all of that is so much bigger than we are here, mm -hmm. and the appreciation for that, and of course the connection. I mean, some folks, again, uh, again, when I said their minds are blown, they're kind of wigged out with first what they're seeing. Some people start cheering. Some people start crying because uh, and then depending on where you are, if it's your first, your second, your third total solar eclipse, you might react a little different. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Rochester in Western. Thank you so very much. Yeah. Right around the corner here with our doctor. next totality. Mm -hmm. All right. Rochester, Western New York, next on the path. And of course, we have a station there that has coverage. Let's join our station, WHAM. Nice way to celebrate something special. And will the birds chirp? in the dark. We want to know that too. <laughs> Love it. We're keeping our eye on that. Thank Back you. to you guys. Speak soon. <laughs> Jackie, thank you very much. Don't have too much fun out there. <laughs> Stay quiet or you're going to spook the moon away. We don't just have crews on the ground in Monroe County for you. Right now we do have a drone team flying over Canandaigua where a total solar eclipse celebration is happening at Finger Lakes Community College. Look at that sky. Yeah, team. it is getting pitch black out there. Take a look at this shot from our drone pilots, Matt Beck and Daniel Finkelstein. FLCC has a researcher from Cornell visiting campus talking all things eclipse plus food trucks and more there. All right, it is almost time for the moment we have been waiting for. We are now just about 30 seconds away from totality. Up first, the crowd at SUNY Brockport. We're giving you a live look there in just a moment. I think this is our live picture from SUNY Brockport. You can see, again, they are going to be experiencing five additional seconds mm -hmm. of totality there. It is dark as night. They are in totality at this moment. Incredible. And you can tell because it is pitch black at this point. Look at how dark it is at 320. They are in totality there at SUNY Brockport right on the center line. So they're going to get that extra five mm -hmm. seconds of totality. Pretty incredible to see here just how dark it is outside. And it's 320 in the afternoon. We are officially in totality, everybody. Really incredible images that we're seeing from there. You can see uh, uh, the light on the horizon there. I believe this now is live from uh, Innovative Field. This is a live look from inside Innovative Field where the Red Wings are hosting that solar palooza. They've been doing a festival there. Pitch black, as black as night, live at Innovative Field. Mike Catalan is out there for us, and we know there are a thousands of fans in that stadium right now all out there for this moment we are in totality at this minute really incredible to see the city go dark during the day you can't even see the people there right in front of us there are people in front of this camera but it is so dark during totality that you can't even tell it almost looks like they're inside somewhere with the light shut off now we're at parcel 5 downtown for the party in the dark 
Wow. Just really, the only thing lighting the screen up there are cell phones. Yeah. People trying to take images of the moon and the sun. Unfortunately, we are seeing cloudy sky out there. But again, you can see the result of this total solar eclipse of totality over Rochester, plunging the area into darkness. Now, if those clouds were not in the way right now, we would be able to see that soupy atmosphere, that plasma mix of ions and electrons, the corona of the sun, really incredible. Now, now here at the Rochester Museum and Science Center, Karen. Yeah, they are there for the Rock the Eclipse Festival. And again, you can see the clouds there, but pitch darkness they're in right now. Street lights have been turned on. Look at that. As if it's nighttime. So you can see so many people there just in awe outside. It's total darkness, <laughs> three in the afternoon. You can only imagine what it, it being indoors, what it is like out there experiencing mm -hmm. this. Um, it's gotta be a visceral experience for a lot of these people, you know, groups of people coming together, uniting all over this one singular experience. People from all around the world coming to the region for this. Now, Casa Larga Vineyards, in totality, probably toasting away yes. with some nice vino at this hour. <laughs> Hopefully they can um, remember where their mouths are because they can't <laughs> see anything at this point. Don't Nothing spill at all. It. Yeah, don't spill it. Thankfully they've got some fire going there so they can see in front. But it's incredible. I mean, we knew it was going to be like this, but I still, it's, it's incredible to see just how dark it is. And this is going to last for another couple minutes at least for us because we yeah. are in the path of totality. Totality here. We are in that path of totality. Casa Larga Vineyards, uh, one of the highest spots elevation wise in Monroe County. Unfortunately, not high enough to get through those higher elevation clouds that are pretty thick at this hour, but incredible images just to see how dark it is outside at 323 <laughs> and 30 seconds in the afternoon. Yes, yeah, so they are there toasting the uh, the moment away. Like you said, so many people coming from across the globe. And uh, I think we're going to be checking in here with Scott mm -hmm. back at our MSC. Hey, Scott, how's it going there? Uh, hard to describe. <laughs> it's really special. Uh, just knowing that we're in the middle of the afternoon, just look at what we're seeing. And we're getting out of totality now uh, very shortly. So the sky is brightening again. Um, everybody's reaction here was really incredible to observe and we got quite dark. We got like uh, nighttime dark for a good two and a half minutes and now you can go up Will and show them we're coming out of totality so we're slowly becoming daylight again. It's a pretty remarkable day regardless of the thick clouds we had um, and you're not going to see this the rest of your life. You won't have these three and a half minutes again out here. Really incredible. Let me uh, go talk with somebody real quick. Excuse me. I asked you guys, we're going to talk with you real quick. Give me, uh, give me your thoughts on what you just uh, observed. Amazing. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Yeah, it was unreal. We had no idea like what to expect, but that was just incredible. So yeah, so I mean, you might have heard on news or social media that it would get dark. Did you, were you really surprised it got that dark? I couldn't believe how long it was too. And I was upset that the clouds were here, but we still saw everything. Yeah, and it got a little chilly, right? Yeah, it did. I felt it. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, it was so great to talk to you. It's fun to hear about the weather and the changes that take place. And, you know, it's happening in, even in places where there's not that path of totality. Here in Washington, D.C., right. we're only in 87% totality, and it's actually peaking right now. That's right. I, do, I was talking to too, uh, Jay uh, the other day. I know he's excited about this. He's on the National Mall where crowds have flocked to a festival hosted by the National Air and Space Museum. Hey, Jay. Hey, good afternoon, guys. This is really a spectacular event. I think we just got through most of it right now. Um, I've got my two glasses here. I've got the glasses here, and then I've got some other ones that are specifically for the sensor on your camera. And just let's just take a look, and let's just look at all these people. Look, look behind us as we go back toward the West Lawn of the Capitol building. There must be tens of thousands of people here. And the really cool thing about it, Matt, is we come this way, we walk over here, there's all these tents all over the place where folks can learn about different things of science, about the eclipse, about the ultraviolet light that could ruin your eyes if you, you know, don't use these special protective glasses. All kinds of things we can learn about the solar system. And folks here were just ooing and ah 
flying, and, and I think what was really magical, two things. One, it's a little cooler in temperature. Two, it suddenly got a little darker. It didn't get too dark, but it was kind of creepy dark. And then the other thing I really like is just looking up at people like this gentleman with this smile on his face as he's seeing this amazing cosmic celestial coincidence. It really is a remarkable coincidence. And I'm going to come over here really quickly and um, talk with a scientist. We talked with you just moments ago. Uh, yeah. I got to warn you, you're on live TV, but just give me a really quick feeling in your heart as what what does this collective experience mean to you and your place in the universe? Because you were t you were very prophetic a few moments ago when we were talking. Sure. Um, I mean, I, I think what I said earlier was, you know, in the in the news, we've been hearing a lot about this eclipse and, and how many people are paying attention to it, how many people are traveling to see it. Um, and there's some editorials I've read about how maybe this is going <laughs> to bring the country together and unite us in a way that maybe we need to be. Um, just a common shared experience. So. And it is pretty spectacular, isn't it, to see this incredible. remarkable coincidence of science. And Welcome back to Eclipse Across America. Good afternoon. We want to welcome everyone watching on our CBS stations who are joining us now for continuous coverage. I'm meteorologist Veronica Johnson. And I'm meteorologist Emily Gracie. Thanks for joining us. Totality just began in Rangeley, Maine. Let's get right to our Portland reporter, Mal Meyer. What's going on out there, Mal? Oh my gosh, this is just a, a spectacular sight, you guys. I can't believe it. I've seen this already once. I saw it back in 2017, but you just... It, it is indescribable, the feeling. It was getting really, like, eerily dark, like almost a hazy dark. And now, if my photographer will show you, uh, there's also, like, this, at the same time, like, almost like a sunset that is happening right now. It absolutely gives you chills. The crowd just went completely wild. Um, we are surrounded by people at the scenic overlook here um, and hopefully you can see they are all just taking this in. We have talked to so many people today who said that this was their first time seeing any kind of eclipse and they were here for this one. So this is really the minutes that we have been waiting for the entire day. Just two minutes and 24 seconds of this spectacular spectacular sight. It truly is like a once in a lifetime moment. And if you are ever able to go see it, if you weren't able to go see it this time, really encourage people to come see it because it is just like absolutely unlike anything you have ever seen, ever experienced. Um, and so we have just people taking tons of photos, but really just trying to take it in for their for themselves, um, just trying to look at it um, because it, it just goes by 
so quickly here, and it sounds like it's actually going to be wrapping up here any second now. Uh, it was just absolutely spectacular. And there it comes. <laughs> and just like that, it's over. But, you know, people are very happy with this. Clearly just uh, really excited that you're hearing the cheers all around me. And just like that, it feels like the lights are almost coming back on at your house or something like that. All of a sudden, it's daylight once again. So this has been absolutely spectacular. And people are popping back on their glasses so they can look once again. It goes so quickly, but it is truly astonishing just thinking of everything that has to happen in order for an eclipse to come to fruition and to be in the path of totality. As we were mentioning before, there were people who had come here um, from New York, from Massachusetts, New Hampshire, as far away as California, um, Utah, Texas, all coming here for this. Just absolutely spectacular. What a wonderful experience to have. So we're going to be talking to some of the people who got to witness it first here in just a little bit, but it was just absolutely spectacular. Those two minutes go by so fast, but it was uh, just absolutely incredible, especially in the moments leading up right up to it. It was getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer, and then all of a sudden that almost like sunset look across yeah. the horizon, and then of course totality. It is just unlike anything you've ever seen. Um, it sounds like people are already starting to pack up and, and head home, um, but it was just an absolutely spectacular eclipse. Mal, I, you're you're in the spot. This is the spot. This might be the best image we've seen so yes. far of the eclipse. And we're hearing that you were in the path of totality for the 2017 eclipse. So I'm curious how the two different events compare in your opinion. Yeah, so at that time I was going down to Missouri and I was able to check out it then and it was spectacular. I had no idea what mm -hmm. to expect and that time it was kind of a, a last minute decision. Um, this I kind of forgot about just like really the moments leading up to this. Uh, this was so incredibly clear. It was so beautiful. The conditions were absolutely phenomenal really barely a cloud in the sky. So this was perfect for everybody who can make their way here to Maine. Mal, meteorologist Veronica Johnson here. I got a question for you. So listen, uh, I know there's some snowpack on the ground. Uh, how, could, could you tell how significant the temperature drop was as it went to darkness and with the fact that it's got the cold snowpack <laughs> on the ground? Oh yeah, absolutely. I was just wearing, you know, like a, a thin jacket before, not even a jacket, kind of a pullover. And, uh, you know, I ended up deciding to throw on my, my winter jacket over it. I'm really glad that I did because that temperature drop probably was somewhere around 15 degrees. I mean, it was that significant and it started feeling a little bit cooler as uh, the partial eclipse started happening. But then especially within the last like you know, five minutes and then totality, it felt really cold up here. It is starting to warm up a little bit, but it is definitely chillier than it was earlier today. Mal, you've done a great job with the play-by-play -play, and yeah. it sounds like everybody's still having a lot of fun, even though you're out of it now. Uh, thanks so very much. Yeah, thank your photographer for us too. Those are some <laughs> yeah. amazing shots. Yes, no problem. You know, uh, Veronica, we're taking a look at that image right there that we're seeing of the final view here in the United States, Holton, Maine. Mm -hmm. This is where it's going to exit the United States, our last view of the For eclipse. Canada, right? Yes, and of course, if you're just joining us, we have an expert here on set with us, NASA solar physicist, Dr. Graham Kerr, who's talking all about this. Can you tell us what we should be looking for in these last few moments that we're going to get this view of the eclipse? So the last part of the U.S. to have the eclipse will probably soon be seeing the diamond ring uh, as, as the sun leaves, and so that's, again, because the moon has this structure, uh, it's got mountains and, and valleys, this diamond ring is the last bit of the bright uh, sun surface that it peeks through. And that kind of signifies the end of the eclipse. And then we'll move into 
some more Bailey's beads, and then eventually just a, a partial eclipse. And because it's all the way while. at the end of the U.S., how long is this yeah. going to last? We've talked about the max, a little, what, mm -hmm. four minutes, 28 seconds, yeah. so how long will this it's last? It's only a couple of minutes, I think, mm -hmm. at the end of the, of the, uh, the path, because the Earth's their surface curves, and so just the projection of that shadow changes uh, as you're going along the curved earth towards the top of the states. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's only a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. All right, so as we say goodbye to this eclipse, and you've talked about the next one that's coming up, you know, but that one's just kind of clipping Alaska, yeah. and they get dark all the time anyway, right? So when's the next one that's going to just cross across so the country again? <laughs> there's, there's two coming up in about 20 years' time. So there's one in 2044, and that's going to touch uh, a bit of Montana and the Dakotas. Uh, but the next one that's going to cross the, a big swath of the country, it's going to be pretty comparable to the 2017 eclipse. It's going to start in California, uh, so a bit, bit further south though. It's going to start in California and end in Florida, and that's in 2045. Mm. So we have quite a while to wait before we get one in the contiguous US. Mm. And wow. the fact that this has touched on 15 states, Dr. Kerr, mm -hmm. 15 states, uh, with the fact that we know that social media, more people are on social media, uh, more channels watching, including YouTube watching live, could this be the most watched solar eclipse ever? It might be, and that's kind of amazing. So this is coming in the middle of NASA's heliophysics big year because we recognize, hey, there's this annular eclipse uh, in October. There's this amazing uh, total eclipse that's going to touch millions of people and millions of people will move into totality and then at the end of the year we have some stuff happening as well. And so it's, we're really hoping that this is, as you said, one of the most watched and that people will really start to learn about the sun and heliophysics and, and why it's important. Mm -hmm. yeah. Speaking of, I, and maybe this was just a rumor, but I heard that we first learned about the mountains on the moon from an eclipse back before we had any ability to like look at the moon through a telescope that people were learning because of those Bailey beads about the topography of the moon. That I'm not sure. I'm not sure about when <laughs> that, that could started. Be spreading rumors. It could it be spreading rumors. It could be. It seems plausible. But we've been studying really the sun for over a century, right? I mean, mm -hmm. uh, scientists way back. So it's not like this is something new. I think we'll be studying the sun in in detail in terms of physics of the sun for a couple hundred years or so, maybe a bit longer. But people have been using the sun and eclipses and some of these features for thousands of years in terms of like, uh, like motions in the sky. Um, but you're right. But I, I think the motions of the moon was probably when Galileo was first using telescopes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, even the way they were building Egyptian tombs to like line up with the solstices. I mean, it's amazing how right. things have been going on for so long. In fact, people have been fascinated by eclipses for uh, thousands of years. And unfortunately, we don't have film that goes back that far. <laughs> <laughs> right, but we can take you back to the eclipses as seen in 1953. Meteorologist Tony Martin turns back the clock. A lot of interesting things happened in 1953. A polio vaccine was developed. The Korean War came to an end. Dwight Eisenhower was inaugurated as president. And Queen Elizabeth II was crowned Queen of England. Perhaps some of the biggest spectacles that year were the five eclipses that were visible across a large part of the globe. Three being solar and two total lunar eclipses. Well, it's not uncommon to have five in a year. It is somewhat rare to have two total lunar eclipses in a 12-month period. You're looking at footage from the summer of 1953 solar eclipse. People were getting a look at the second of three solar eclipses that year by ground and even by plane. This was the most full solar eclipse of the year in 1953 with about 90% of the sun obscured at one point. It was most visible across northern and western North America. Earth experiences four eclipses a year on average, two solar and two lunar. But we can have five solar eclipses in one month. The last time that happened was in 1935. The next time for that, 2206. And we want to come back out here with uh, NASA astrophysicist Graham Kerr. Graham, this is one of those things where it, it's impacting everyone. I mean, there are words that you can use, marvelous, magical, cosmic, life-changing, all of that. It impacts everybody. For those of us who are older, we, we want to be good stewards of the planet that we live on and realize our connection to the total universe. But for kids, this can be the thing, seeing something like this, a total solar eclipse that puts them on a path of, I want to study science. I want to major in science. I want to do something along the lines of astrophysicists, heliophysicists. How did you get into doing what you're doing? Yeah, I completely agree with you. This is a great opportunity for people to try to get a, 
enthused and enthusiastic. I kind of uh, fell into this field. I was going to be a lawyer, but luckily for me, the Scottish government, so I'm originally from Scotland, uh, the Scottish <laughs> government had a, a program where they had the Scottish Space School and they kind of plucked up uh, 50 or so uh, kids who are studying physics in high school and sent them off to Johnson Space Centre for 10 days or so. And being at Johnson Space Centre and talking to scientists and being exposed to a lot of all of the science and the engineering that's happening there and talking directly to the scientists kind of made me realise, oh, I can, this is a job in here, as well as, as well as being something I was obviously interested in, mm -hmm. I can make a career out of this. And so that was kind of eye-opening. So I'm hoping NASA, through this heliophysics big year and through this, uh, this total eclipse, can do the same for, for kids in the States. Right. Well, this has been quite the program here this morning, quite the planning uh, morning, afternoon that's, that's gone into it. And for folks who have been outside witnessing maybe just a partial solar eclipse, okay, that, that's fine. But the content of what you have seen here today and a lot of the imagery uh, from NASA, that will be available online. Emily, I know you have yeah. spoken with a lot of NASA experts. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. NASA if you go onto the National Weather Desk YouTube page, there is a plethora of lots of information. And I know NASA scientists are gonna be studying a lot of the citizen mm -hmm. science data that's coming in. You guys are gonna be going through this for months and years to come, yeah. right? That's exactly right. <laughs> okay, so we talked about the data that's collected on jets. We talked about citizen scientist data. How is all that data layered together then and made accessible to universities, to government, and to private sector? And so um, in terms of uh, universities, uh, that's going to be the kind of probably the fundamental research. And so colleagues like my uh, colleagues who are running the WB57, there were three experiments on there. That's going to help uh, engineering students from building the technology to take to the camera systems. It's going to help uh, some of my physics colleagues. When they stitch together all that data, they're looking for uh, little oscillations in the corona mm -hmm. as they go along. So they're going to use that to understand what is the source of a lot of, uh, of the dynamics that we see in the atmosphere. In terms of industry, what we learn about the sun feeds directly in because, again, we're developing technology. But I mentioned a few times this thing called space weather. Mm -hmm. Space weather directly impacts uh, primarily the space sector, but also communications. Uh, the more we learn about the sun, the more we learn about space weather. And the more we learn about the ionosphere, the more we learn about how space weather impacts the Earth. So all these things are really important, uh, especially now that the space sector is a billion dollars, multi-billion dollar industry. Uh, having the, the knowledge of, mm -hmm. of how that can be impacted is important. And for folks who are just joining us, um, real quick, uh, give an overview, um, tw about 15 seconds or so, the difference between a total, an annular, and a partial. Okay, so a total is what we saw a lot of the images of today, and that is when uh, the, the moon completely covers the sun and we're able to see this faint outer sun's atmosphere, the corona. The partial eclipse is what we're seeing on the screen right now. That's when a chunk of the sun is kind of taken out. And an annular. Oh, hold oh, that, Dr. Kerr. We're going to finish that right after the break. We'll be right back. Stay with us.
Well, students, faculty, and staff from Bowie State University, Bowie State University is in Maryland, is holding an eclipse viewing event. Brad Bell joins us live from there. Brad, how many people are there reacting to the event? Yeah, well, look, it was a it was a big event, but the minute it, it reached what we're calling totality, which was about 87 percent here on the the D.C. suburbs, everybody left. They said, well, that's it. And everybody just packed up and left. But, you know, this was a big deal here at Bowie State. Bowie State is an HBCU. It's the oldest HBCU in the state of Maryland. It's one of the 10th oldest in the country. And, and they really wanted to put on a show here. Let me let me take a quick peek. And they got involved with NASA. NASA provided these glasses. We still have a little bit of a crescent there. We can see the moon rapidly exiting out of the top of the sun is what it, it looks like here. But they wanted to get some people excited, the people that organized it. And they brought in some guests. And Joining me now is uh, Kenneth Harris. Uh, he's an engineer. He is from where we are, Prince George's County. Um, worked for NASA. Now he's a private contractor. You had a message here, right? Selling STEM a little bit? Yeah, Getting selling STEM. I'm excited about the field of STEM. I'm excited what we're doing within the community here. And STEM is so important, building and developing that and increasing that pipeline for our students. And Solar Eclipse is just another way to get folks riled up and get them excited. I saw a few people putting them on, going, kind of going ooh and ah. Did oh, you yeah. see that? Did, yeah. you get, did you get what you're I, looking for? I did, exactly. We got the, you know, the 88% totality here because we're not along the exact path because that would have been a treat to have a total solar eclipse. But even now, like you said, we've got about... 20 20 ish percent left as it as the moon moves out of our, our line of sight till later tonight how'd you feel about it when you got to oh i'm ecstatic yeah, yeah the whole time whole time beginning and i got my my son's out here somewhere he's enjoying his very first solar eclipse he's three years old so he wasn't alive during the the previous one at least the 2017 one so i'm i'm over the moon i'm excited for him <laughs> over the moon <laughs> um the place filled up yeah i mean were you were you pleased did yeah, you expect that yeah nasa donated we donated somewhere around um 2,000, 3,000 of these glasses. Um, I think registration reached the 1,500 mark. So we're, we, we, are, we are amazed by the turnout of the community. I saw a lot of small children running around here with their parents, as well as a lot of students that are from Bowie State University. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank Kenneth, you. I, I really appreciate it. Appreciate it. So, yeah, so this was a good event. You know, they had the band out here, the Bowie State band. They were playing. The the, the dancers, what did they call it? The dancing divas, they were up there, and they were going for a, for a, good, a good long time. But like I said, it was the funniest thing. Right when we got to 320, Everybody looked up, they made an announcement, and they said, that's it, and, and everybody filed out. Um, but it was exciting. You could hear the people going ooh and ah, and, and, and what we had here with that 88 87% totality was, was sort of someone turned the dimmer down, right? It didn't get dark, um, but it wasn't fully bright either. It was kind of like dusk, and now things are brightening up again. We were very lucky that we had full sun, a little bit of uh, high clouds, but they weren't there at that key moment. Moment. So it, this was a, this was a nice event, and you know, to not be in the totality zone and to have a place put on such a big show like that, it was a, it was an honor and it was a privilege actually to to be out here. So we'll send it back into you guys now. How would you compare this one with 2017? Because I know that you were reporting in 2017. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was a little more, right? I think that's what the statistics show. Um, it, it got a little dimmer. And I will also say in, in 2017, I remember exactly where I was. I was in College Park, Maryland, the University of Maryland College Park, and we had some cloud cover. So we couldn't really see it as well uh, then as uh, as now. But it was it was great, you know, and with these glasses, you know, you, you really can see. And, and what we saw was the, the, the moon enter the sun from from my perspective, from the bottom right, and it took its chunk out, and now it is, it's moving out on the top, and it, it's quiet. Um, we had that feeling of the eclipse, you know, that people look for, that you're experiencing something really different because the light is, is so odd. Um, so this was, you know, a little bit more than in 2017. Um, the next one is not for quite some time. I hope I live to see it. So for me, this was a, this was a thrill, and it was a pleasure to be in a, a group of people and, and to have these glasses provided by NASA so that we could keep keep tabs on how it was progressing. Absolutely. Thank you so very much, Brad. We were talking about in the past year, there's been two eclipses, but they're not the same. One was this one was a total solar mm -hmm. eclipse. Mm -hmm. The last one back in the fall was an annular mm -hmm. eclipse. And you were talking about that difference. Can you pick yeah. up on where you left off there? So uh, it's an annular eclipse. It's when the moon is slightly further away in its orbit around the Earth. And so it isn't actually big enough as it's projected in the sky to cover all of the sun. And so what you see is it was called a ring of fire. So you block a big chunk of the sun, but all around the moon, you have this kind of uh, bright glow. 
Um, and then of course during the total, it's closer so we can block all of the sun. Mm -hmm. And, and again, the, the size, that, that, that size thing that we spoke about with the moon being 400 times smaller, it is so key, distance, distance, distance yeah. with uh, respect to the sun. A lot of things have to come together for us to see this. It's really kind of magical that we're seeing it. And we, we get these lunar eclipses every once in a mm -hmm. while too that now I don't think anybody's going to care about. Not quite yeah. as spectacular, right? What do we see with a lunar so, eclipse? During a lunar eclipse, so there are three solar eclipses and that's when we have the sun, uh, the, the, sun the moon, and the Earth lined up. But a lunar eclipse is when the Earth is in the middle. So uh, what we're doing is we're blocking the sun's light from the moon. And in fact, the moon doesn't produce its own light. The moon reflects light from other things. And so we see the moon get uh, dimmer. So if it's a full moon and we happen to be during a lunar eclipse, you'll see the moon get dimmer and take on this reddish hue, kind of reddish color. Um, so not yeah. quite the show that yeah. we saw yeah. today is what you're but saying. There's always the lunar eclipse that precedes the solar. Is that right? Um, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we'll get back to that one. Sure. But one of the things that we know is that the path is always different. Why? Uh, this again to do with kind of everything lining up mm -hmm. and so the geometry of that path changes one depending on the season so is the um, is the uh, the moon going around its uh, orbit is it mm -hmm. kind of coming into or away from uh, the northward direction but also uh, is it above or below that five degree line like, is that's it, right um, so mm -hmm. it can take on a lot of different paths right this yeah. is, they asked to put out this image um, that we were just looking at of the one the annular that came through in October I think it was and then this one because it's such a big mm -hmm. year in NASA was really advertising this is the sun's big year we've yeah. got solar you know cycle peaking we have two eclipses we're talking about mm -hmm. so what next what can we look forward so, to next <laughs> what's on I'm the horizon I guess I should so say the uh, the end event of the heliophysics big year is when Parker Solar Probe, which is the first spacecraft that was sent to the sun, uh, gets to its closest approach. It's going to mm. get to within 10 solar radius uh, distance, which is the closest we've ever sent uh, a spacecraft. And it's going to take uh, lots and lots of really, really useful data from within the solar corona. So that's happening on Christmas Eve this year. Okay. And we'll get the data a little bit after. Well, it's very what's far that thing made of? But, uh, it's got a really, really uh, high-tech heat shield. The, uh, the I would have guessed so. <laughs> the folks at John Hopkins design. Wow. All right. Well, if you missed seeing today's total solar eclipse in person, you will have more chances in the future. The next total solar eclipse is just two years away on August 12, 2026. But as you can see there, the path of totality is over western Greenland, far eastern Iceland, and finally northern Spain. There will also be another one on August 2nd of 2027, portions of North Africa and the Middle East will be in the path of that totality. There's people that do go all over the world chasing For, these. Yes, I'm, I'm right there. You're doing it? Iceland 2026. <laughs> the next total solar eclipse visible in the U.S. will appear in parts of Alaska in 2033. In 2044, one will be visible in North Dakota and Montana. But the best opportunity will come 21 years out. On August the 12th, 2045, a total solar eclipse travels from coast to coast, from Northern California to Florida. And among the cities that will be in totality are, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Reno, okay. Salt Lake City, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Orlando. That's going to be huge. And Fort Lauderdale. Little Rock will also be in the path oh, just like it was today. And one of the things that is just crazy, a lot of folks had a hard time wrapping their head around it, is the big difference between 95% totality and 100%. Right. I got my eye on the one in 2054. That one's going through South Carolina. It's oh, going, there you yeah. go. Right. Another one in Charleston. Get, get the cocktail you saw the 2017 one, right, I did. Morgan? I did. You, did you have clear skies? Was it we good? We did. We were really lucky. Yeah. Great, uh, great viewing conditions. Yep. So. Same mm -hmm. in Charleston. Mm -hmm. We lucked out. There were a lot of clouds, some storms popping up around us, but we got a good, right. a little yeah. clear. Yeah, the weather, right, 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 again, can, can be so tricky with this, even if you look real at buzz kill. the climatological record for sure. <laughs> right. Um, Dr. Kara, thank you so much for joining us today. Three hours of expertise. I think we have learned a lot. Just Veronica and I ourselves have learned so much, so we really appreciate your time here today. Of course. Thanks for having me. It's Thank great. you. Thank you very much. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. This has been a production of the National Weather Desk, which you can find our show on the air Monday through Friday on YouTube, Facebook, and some of the stations you're watching us on today. Yeah, for sure. Let's take a look back now at some of the highlights as the total solar eclipse moved from Texas to Maine. Have a great day, everyone.